to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dev Warnke, and as always, I'm here with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Absolutely nailed it there. A perfect harmony, perfect dismount. Perfect. Perfect we're, every way. We're very good and we're very musical. Any uh, catchphrases for either of you to say, for example? <laughs> catchphrases? I don't have any catchphrases. I do have a question, though. How good is it to be alive? Oh, okay, a thanks. rhetorical one, I should That's say. And Jess, you have any questions? I just have a statement. Oh, okay. I wish I was never born. <laughs> Wow. We're real yin and yang types, aren't we? we? God, that's why we just can't get along. (laughs) That's why we get along so well. Yes. Because you can't get along. Because we can't. No, no, you're right. Yin and we complete each other. Oh, okay, great. And then Dave's just here. I'm standing on top of you. You're a platform. (laughs) The yin and yang classically just can't connect. (laughs) (laughs) It's beautiful. Dave, what is this show we're doing? What am I doing here? Who am I? <laughs> I don't I don't have all the answers. Nobody okay. knows, mate. But I can say what we're doing here, and that is we're doing a podcast called Do Go On, where we take it in turns to report on a topic. Now, often these are suggested by the listeners, but sometimes we just find something we want to talk about. We go away, do a bit of research, bring it back to the group. Matt, it's your turn this week to give us a report. Jess and I have no idea what you're going to talk about, so to get us on the topic, you ask us. A little question. I will. And because uh, the answer is uh, geographical in nature, oh, I'm going to lock you out first, Dave. And give- oh, I've been locked out? Yeah, but honestly, then I just feel more embarrassed because Dave will be like, oh, yeah, I know. And I'm there like, oh, and it'll be a question like, name a continent. There's and I'm like, ha- I can't do it. Two half points up for grabs. So, you get them both. <laughs> two half points. If you get them both, you get a full point. Okay. 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 And Thank you, you for none? explaining the maths to me as well. Jess, you get- you get the first two guesses, right, okay? First on. two? And I still won't get it. Well, there's two answers. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Fair okay. enough, okay. Who were the two main combatants in the Second Sino-Japanese War? Japan? Yes. Oh. So that's a half point. I wouldn't have said that, so. <laughs> but who else? Yeah. <sighs> who did Japan fight? Yes. Dave? Am I locked in? Locked out. Is that you? I'm passing? just asking Dave. Oh, yeah. He can't. He can't technically answer the question, but he could answer me. Okay, Dave. Do you have any idea? I have some idea, <laughs> but I don't know. Go on, have a crack. I would say maybe China. Jess, you're locking I'm that in. I'm going to say China. Correct. You have the full <laughs> point. Well done. You know what? I was thinking China. <laughs> One full point. Honestly, it's easier. Otherwise, you'll forever have a half point next to your yeah, name you in, the, in the running tally, and yeah. that's annoying. It's too much. Yeah. Uh, so. The whole Second Sino-Japanese War happens in, in the background of this story a little bit later. Okay. The first one happened late 19th century. Second one sort of happened in the years leading up and including the Second World War. Ah. So, when Japan and China, that was like the the big fight in, in our sort of neck of the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to get too technical here. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that, you know, with the... Uh, Japan on the, what do you call them, the Axis side and, and mm. China on the Allo side. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that really too much. Can I make a pretty dumb yes, statement? Please. There's been heaps of wars, hey? <laughs> <laughs> so many. Uh, There's been like yeah. stacks of them. And some of them got great names, but I don't think I'll ever find one I prefer than the Boar War. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Boar War the wins ball. in terms of fun names. Boar War. What about like the one, was it like a seven-year war or something? Yeah, That's kind of fun. That's fun. There's a lot of ones that have a something year war. Have a bit it? of a number in there. 100 yeah. years war. 100 years war. There's 116 years, but they were like, this is too many. Yeah, let's round it we'll down. Count it down. Year. Cap it. <laughs> yeah, cap it. It rolls off the tongue. Hundred year war. Just we lo- made it. Just lots of wars. Wouldn't you feel shit if you were one of the people who died in the final sixteen years? Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a long war in itself. Yeah. yeah. They're like, nah, forget that last sixteen. Anyway, mm. this week we're talking about Kawashima Yoshiko, who is connected to both China and Japan, known as a Chinese princess and a Japanese spy. Ooh. Oh my god. Okay. What a portfolio. <laughs> Busy. So this topic, I put. I think I put five. Uh, it was sort of a second chance draw. I put five topics that had just lost vo- Patreon votes over the last six months or so, and uh, this was an absolute landslide. I think nearly sixty percent of the vote went to Kawashima, and uh, this was suggested by Mike Hendricks from Portland, Oregon, and Sandy Tai from Ballarat in Victoria. Cool. Most famously now known as Kawashima Yoshiko, but born Aisen Jiro 
Xianyu, in approximately 1907, the exact date seems to be unknown, a child of the Manchu Prince Shanki, also known as Prince Shu, a member of the Qing Dynasty, and one of the concubines named Lady Jangia. So, father was the Manchu Prince Shanki, mm. mother, a concubine named Lady Jangia. Some fantastic names. Amazing sure names there. I mean, I'm, I'm sure the spelling's different, but Prince Shu. Does sound great too. Prince yeah. Shu. I think Prince Shu was sort of like the like the title that he at at one point held. Ah. Uh, but yeah, every every character in this story seems to have six or seven different names. Cool. Right. And then so she was born. You're right. You're a princess, but you're also a spy. That's what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah. Okay? okay. But we've named it from birth. <laughs> That's what princess you are. slash spy. <laughs> uh, so. Ison, you're going to enjoy this, I'm sure, Jess. Ison Jiro Xianyu was one of the prince's 38 children. How does that feel? Is that too many? Oh, it's or way not, is too, that many. too many. Or is that not enough because you'd prefer 40? I was going to say whip out some twins at the end if you do not mind. <laughs> A couple of twins to finish. 38 kids. That's too many kids. Are you kidding me? Sometimes I genuinely think there's no way you'd remember all their names. But then, like, you think about school and you knew everybody in your class's name and there was, True. like, 30 kids. You knew everybody in your year level and there was, you know, hundreds. So- you probably would, but also too many. But you wouldn't Ma- know them intimately, would you? No. Imagine being a middle child too. Fuck. And hell. also, you like those when you're at school learning names, your brain is is um, able to take in a lot of info. Yeah. When you're an old parent, yeah. You know, it's like a, it's no longer a sponge; it's more like a, a rock. Yeah. You know, you're nothing's getting yeah. in. <laughs> According to Morgan Dunn, writing for all that's interesting, the Ching, and I and I looked up the pronunciation for quite a few words in this one. The Qing Dynasty, some people, I think it looks like maybe in England they say the Qing Dynasty. America says the Qing Dynasty. Is this because it's Q-I-N? Is that that one? Yeah, Q-I-N-G. Yeah. So, there was the final imperial dynasty in China before they became a a communist republic or whatever they are now. Mm -hmm. Um, So, anyway, I'm going to say the Qing Dynasty. And they swept to power in the 17th century as conquerors, nomadic warriors, uh, who swiftly toppled the Ming Dynasty. For 200 years, the Manchurian emperors had reigned over a prosperous nation, but by the time Kawashima was born, their grip on power was weakening. So, yeah, the uh, the Qing Dynasty is also known as, uh, is run by these Manchurian emperors. Mm. Uh, writing for Redex, Bruce Coggeshell quotes a correspondent named Shen who filed reports to Reuters from Reuters. Reuters. <laughs> Reuters. Man, I don't know why. I don't know why. That's it's a very that. strange word. Okay, so it's not me because I well, do in the English language. You know the way we would pronounce words, but it's not an English word. But yeah, that's why. Ah, oh, right. Where is Reuters from? I think it's is it it's somewhere in Europe, Dutch maybe. Right, because it's, it's, it's the first news wire service ever. And is it spelled like I? Would you say Roy, uh, Reuters if you didn't know? Yeah, no. it's R E U R E U. Yeah. So yeah. It's, I don't know. T E R S, yeah, that's right. Uh, anyway, so the Shan, the uh, Reuters, <laughs> Reuters. <laughs> I, like, I went. I'll take a moment here and get it right. <laughs> I'd somehow double bluff myself. Anyway, Shan reporting for Re- Reuters. Oh okay. my god! Established in London, but by a German-born Paul Reuter. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. That's why it's called Reuter. What? <laughs> Because of Paul Reuter. But anyway, Shen sent in this report from Chongqing in China. She says, I want to go there. Chongqing. I've been there. <gasps> what was it like? Was it as good as it sounds? Yeah. Well, Ch- I think it's Chongqing. I think that's the place where uh, on, on the tour they're like, this is known as the Windy City. And oh I was like, my how many God. other places are known as? <laughs> Wellington in New Zealand. Chicago. Chongqing. <laughs> Yep. There are three that come to mind. Big three. So, this report was uh, from 1945, uh, writing that Aysen Jiro Xianyu was born in a family which, after 300 years of absolute rule over China, felt the reins of authority slipping away from its hands, and the rule ended in 1911. Hmm. Part of the family was allowed to stay on in the forbidden city in Peiping, which is now Beijing, shorn of all power and receiving pensions from the revolutionary government. Though they retained all the rights and fripperies of the royal family. Frippery! <laughs> they, including, like, having thousands of palace guards and domestics. They still had all their servants and stuff, but basically no real power. But they're allowed to stay oh, on. sounds fucking I great. I mean, it sounds ideal. Wait, so I get to stay in this very nice place. But I just don't and have to I make any decisions. I still have people work for me. 
And, like, no pressure. No pressure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sign me up. Yeah, I'm in. Can I have that now? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Thank you. (laughs) And can I have some frippery? (laughs) Yeah. You can have all the fripperies you like. (laughs) You'll be up to the freaking eyeballs and fripperies. (laughs) Despite this, can you believe it, Jess? The more ambitious family members put themselves into self-exile and plotted and planned for the restoration of the heavenly dynasty from afar. One of these was Isen Jiro Sianyu's father, Prince Shu. Prince Shu was a notorious diehard and pro-Japan, for he believed the Manchu dynasty could be maintained and revived with Japan's help. Right, so you've got the option of just living stay it here, up. living it up, or he, go, he goes, "Fuck that! I want, we want the power as well. We're, you know, we're ordained. We should be in charge." So yeah, goes into exile, plotting to come back. Exactly. Sometime, right? <sighs> Even though you could just be living it up, you could just be having a nice time. Thousands of guards, hundreds of spa baths, I imagine. Numerous fripperies. Oh my! So many fripperies. Probably you a helipad. You say you had spa baths. Hundreds. Oh, I love a spa every, bath. Every every ha- every bedroom has a as an ensuite, and they all have those tubs with the jets in built. You know what? When Whoa. we moved into the my family home, where my parents still live, and we moved in, and it needed a bit of work, it had a spa bath in it. Oh my god! And my parents ripped that out, put in a regular bath. What? The- Why would you downgrade? I haven't spoken to them since. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that until right now, but I haven't spoken about it. It's a strange decision. Took out the spa bath. Put in a regular tub. Why are they anti spa? What's their problem with the spa? I don't know. Is it a generational thing, do you think? I'm going to have a word. We don't need those sort of fripperies in our house. Yes. Is that a fripperies jet? I think they might be jets. Uh I have no idea what fripperies are. (laughs) My parents must have been like, we are not frippery people. Yeah. Yeah, We don't have jets in our bars. They felt a bit embarrassed, but they put it out. They turfed onto the nature strip. They said, we don't want this. We don't want this. This I don't want my kids growing up in a a jet filled house. Exactly. You'd be soft. You'd be soft and spoiled. (laughs) That's right. We get out of the bar. I grew up with. (laughs) Exactly. I grew up wrinkle free. I never went in that bloody bar. (laughs) Prince Shu's gone off uh, to Japan plotting to take back what was rightfully his family's, basically. So, young Aisen uh, was sent to live at new adoptive father Naniwa Kawashima's mansion, and maybe you'll recognise that name, and was renamed Roshiko Kawashima at around eight years of age. Renamed. Sent off to live with a new dad. New dad, new name. new dad, new name. New. You're a new you. New Let's you. get a haircut as well. <laughs> Hi, Broden Kelly from Auntie Donna, who's just entered the studio. You've hey. got coffees. <laughs> oh, thanks, Broden. Is that for me? Can, can I can I talk? Yeah. Um, hey, guys. Hey. Thanks for having me. Hey, on your You're head, on bro. the air. Um, what's up? What, what's the topic today? Uh, uh, we're talking about Kawashima <laughs> Yoshiko, princess. Japanese. Japanese spy. Far out, he's good. Chinese princess. She's just- They've just changed uh, their name to the Japanese uh, Kawashima from the Chinese Xianryu. Okay. Okay. Do yep. you know much about this day? topic? So, this is how how many episodes deep are you guys now? Four, this is 406. Yeah, that's that, that sounds like a 400 deep topic. But that's <laughs> like- <laughs> um, look, I just got a bunch of coffees uh-huh. and they've put in an extra flat white. Sure. Would anyone like it? I mean, I'm still going with this one, but pop it down. We'll work our way yeah. through it. I uh, think I think we'll we'll take half. We could develop a, some sort of sip system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, this was a leap of faith from me. I was like, do I just walk in and yeah. ruin the podcast? I, absolutely. Always yeah. welcome to ruin a podcast. Yeah, you're I not ruining it. You're enhancing it. Yeah, this is great. It's how about that? I don't know how you could ruin a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean. I've ruined many podcasts of yes. my own by, you know, <laughs> taking the wrong angle or, you know, going down the wrong path or upsetting someone. Hey, or- you ruined one of ours too years ago. Oh, I thought you were going to say this one because I walked in with a coffee. What was the one I ruined? Oh, the one you're on. Yeah, that's true. I did ruin that. But do you know, I actually ruined your live do go on. Which one? The one we did the other week live where you prepared. You did. I was thinking about it while I was driving around the other day. Oh, we you, did the quiz show. You did this yeah. beautiful hour of preparation about the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Oh, it was more than an hour of preparation. Yeah, you did. But yeah, <laughs> an, hour's, an, hour, an hour show's worth, I guess. And you'd done so much good work. And then like halfway through, I just went, is one of the answers the guy on the horse? <laughs> and you're like, yes. And then I said like, Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan. And I, was like, oh, and I just sort of started to ruin it no, for I'm you. I was going through my slides being, there he is. Yep, there it is. <laughs> That was did, a real jerk thing even, to do. Did we even win? 
Well, it's not about winning. Well, it is. No, it's not about winning. It's about ruining the show. Well, I was going to say, if you- I win in that respect. (laughs) If we won and you had done that, then that would have been all worth it, you know? But if we didn't win, then yeah, you ruined it. Yeah, I did. Who was my guest that night? Claire Hooper. Claire Hooper. From Killing Heidi. (laughs) Just just the one, the last one. I can't remember which one you were Oh, then yeah, we won. That was the last one, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we won. So, it was worth it. You didn't ruin it all. Honestly- you say that you ruined it, but that was probably my favourite of the, the three we did this year. It was great fun. Well, that rap brings me joy because I didn't do comedy festival and then you were the only people to ask me to do anything. <laughs> and so, that was like, oh, this is nice to do a bit of comedy festival. Um, it was very nice to have you on. I won't be offended if you cut this and I'm sorry to- I no, imagine no, no, you're doing no. like no. nine of these today. No. <laughs> no only two. And oh. we'll absolutely be saying special guest Brody yeah, Kelly to try right. and get some of those- yeah, you're some going to do uh, two extra listens. listens. Up. You're sharing this on your Instagram, I imagine. <laughs> Mate, yeah. Just send it as a collab and I'll <laughs> <laughs> invite us collaborator. Um, you're, aren't you about to go to do a big tour? Yeah, we're going world tour September. World tour. That's soon world by the tour. time this comes out. Yeah, this out. one's coming out in August. So. By world tour, I mean English speaking. Are you, oh, you're uh, not going to either China or Japan because that would be very that'd be relevant. That'd be so good. To- oh, I would go off if we were massive Have you ever Japan. been to Chongqing in China? No, I've okay. been to Wanthaggy. Okay. <laughs> In China? No, in the near the D cell down in oh, near yeah. the D cell plant down in <laughs> south southeast Victoria. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's travel broadens the mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Venus Bay and Inverloch and <laughs> beautiful. But beautiful what part were of you? World. What did you say? Chunking. Yeah, no, I, no, no. I <laughs> Ballarat. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he studied in Ballarat, didn't he? Studied in Ballarat, yeah, but not. What did you say? <laughs> Chunking China. Not Chunking China, no. I went Ballarat. Ballarat Uni, Fed Uni now. Yeah, right. Um, you, you got an offer from Chunking, though. You- no, I, I, I went- I, So, I was in year 12. I was like, I want to be an actor. Mm-hmm. And so, I just went to one. I said, I'm going to this uni and I'm not going for any others. Whoa. Why did I do that? What an idiot. It yeah. worked out, though, right? That's yeah, where you met. Auntie you're talking- Donna. Yeah, that's where I met all the Auntie Donnas. So, uh, any regrets? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it was good. Anyway, uh, this has been sick. Great. Thanks, well, thanks, thanks for dropping in. by. If you ever think of a topic you want to come back and tell us about again. Yeah. Love Another plane one because you're a plane spotter. Well, let's talk about Ocean's. Has anyone done Ocean Gate yet? No. no. What's Ocean Gate again? Ocean Gate. Ocean Gate Gate, we should call it. Oh, where the boat got stuck? The, uh, no. the submarine the other week. Oh, the submarine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is a boat of stuck. the underwater. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of, kind of also almost a boat. Is the Titanic now a submarine? Oh, Holy shit. shit. That's a big question. Is a failed boat a submarine is my question. Oh, okay. Wow. So, you think all a submarine is is a, a, boat, a boat that couldn't make it? Yeah, you know top. when like, they, they get cars when they find a car in a lake? Yeah. They're like, we've got to get that submarine is out that and a make, it a, make it a car again. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think that's- I think technically, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. It is submarine. Yeah. Or robot fish. Oh, yeah. It's They're the two. <laughs> that's one of those two for sure. <laughs> <laughs> robot fish. <laughs> sorry. I'm going to go. Go uh, book tickets to Chung King. Anyway, we've got a pod to do. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks for the coffee. You don't have to drink the coffee. Um, I, will, I will drink that coffee. And all the best to the princess. Thank yeah. you so much. Nice. All the best to the princess. <laughs> hey, that, that's not for you. I just say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the best to the princess. Yeah. That's a classic sign off. Thanks, Thanks Broden. Bye, Bye Broden. So, Matt, where were we? Aizen, now known as Yoshiko Kawashima. Yes. All right, living in the mansion and the adopted- Yes, new daddy, new, new life. New daddy in Japan. That's right. Uh, according to Dan- J- Japan daddy, Japan daddy. There's nothing in that. Don't worry. Mm. <laughs> Japan dan droid. Japan dad droid. Because there it's is. a band, Japan droids. Yeah, right. nailed it. Is that enough? Jap- Japan Dan Droid. Jap- Japan Dad, Dad Droid. Love it. Perfect. <laughs> I have no notes. <laughs> uh, according to Dan, Yoshiko Kawashima, a princess in exile, was anything but a conventional Chinese princess. For instance, Kawashima rode a horse to school. What? <laughs> what? Princesses don't do that. Princes, princess maybe. Yeah. Certainly not a princess. Also wore men's clothing. Whoa. And this was shocking to polite Japanese society- had shortcut hair. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. As a, a princess in exile in Japan, Japan's media was all over this story. Oh, okay. I was thinking that, like, they'd gone under the radar somehow with a new name, the new branding, but it's like, oh, no, Chinese princess is here. Th- and, and this is a child, right? Yes. And the media's just having a great time 
watching a child. Yeah, yeah. Watching a child ride a horse with a short haircut. Short haircut. Yeah, and that makes exactly. that news. Yeah, yeah. That's, big in the papers. That's big in Reuters. Because I think True. also- uh, <laughs> This is- I think Japan at this point is like, you know, they're- Going, they're imper- They're looking to they're going take over the whole region, basically. Right? Yeah, so they're going off. They're going off, mate, like a frog in a bloody sock. <laughs> they are going off. <laughs> According to Barbara Morgan, writing for Encyclopedia. Barbara Morgan. <laughs> I I don't. I almost took out uh, quotes from Barbara Morgan's article because some of them are just like contradict every other source. Right. But anyway. But you kept it in so I could say Barbara Morgan. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. And Barbara Morgan to you. (laughs) Uh, But according to Barbara Morgan, petite in stature and extremely pretty, Kawashima took to wearing men's clothing, particularly uniforms, with riding breeches and shiny black boots. You see, how could I leave that out? Yeah, how could you leave that? And are you saying Barbara Morgan is wrong because everyone else said they're not pretty? (laughs) No. Absolutely not. (laughs) Real ugly. (laughs) No, Barbara Morgan had like a- Barbara Morgan? A different- uh, a different story about the death, which seems oh, okay. That seems which seems like was pretty consistent everywhere else, right? And and Barbara Morgan said a bit of a spoiler there. Went over to Japan uh, at birth, not at the age of eight, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, okay. But everywhere else is saying as an eight-year-old. A year bit old. older. Yeah, Barbara okay. Morgan's doing a bit of fan fiction. Yeah. But I, it's, I just I don't know if it's, they've just got good branding, but Encyclopedia dot com sounds like you should be able to trust it. Oh, for sure. So maybe everyone else is wrong, or maybe I, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I trust Barbara well, I mean, Morgan lo- with my life. Yeah, no, true. Oh God, I don't. I'm not trying to besmirch the name of Barbara Morgan. I think you are. Oh, you think I'm here besmirching it? I think you're a bad boy. I'm not. If anything, I wish nothing but the best fripperies to Barbara Morgan. <laughs> I love Barbara Morgan. <laughs> I want Barbara Morgan to have everything she wants and deserves. Wow. Okay, I take and it back. And more. And more. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I simply had to. Oh, you simply must. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, media are obsessed. Mm-hmm. And they're like, so unconventional. <laughs> Riding horses, short haircuts. It's constant fodder for the Japanese newspapers. According to Phyllis Birnbaum in her book, Manchu Prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> Manchu Prisoners. <laughs> 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 In her book, Manchu Princess, <laughs> Japanese spy, <laughs> Japanese spy. <laughs> Yoshiko Kawashima later wrote, I was born with what the doctors call a tendency towards the third sex, and so I cannot pursue an ordinary woman's goals in life. People criticize me and say that I am perverted, and maybe they're right. I just can't behave like an ordinary feminine woman. Wow, what the doctors call a tendency to the third sex. Yeah. So it's sort of like an acknowledgement of like of 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 gender identity being a bit of a spectrum, but they don't really have the understanding or the words for it yet, I guess. Yeah, maybe. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Third sex is saying it's not a binary, it's a trinary. Yeah. <laughs> There's like okay. Whatever the word for that is. Yeah, interesting. Uh, but isn't it? Yeah, it's so it's so <laughs> it's so weird that time where like a person wearing pants is like, mm. oh, this is going straight to the papers. Yeah, so weird, <laughs> isn't it? We just can't we just can't grasp it. But yeah, different it, times. It sounds like um, some sources will say, and that, like it's one of those stories that has everything is a little bit different. I mean, Barbara Morgan's Barbara right Morgan? off the body deep end, but. <laughs> <laughs> but every, every every version of it does seem a little different. The details are different on every source. But I was reading that uh, Yoshiko was sent to a boy's school wearing a boy's uniform for oh. a time. And maybe that's where they got the got a bit of a taste for the pants, yep. lifestyle and pants. <laughs> that'll, mm. give you and a horses. Taste. that'll give you a taste for pants. Oh, <laughs> mate, once I got a taste for pants, Ugh. there was no turning back. No turning back. <laughs> Honestly, for me, I reckon if I'd ever worn a dress, I wouldn't have turned back either. Flowing. Yeah. I mean, right now I'm feeling the right up the fuck. The crotch. It feels co- uh, comfortable, but also are you getting breezes in there oh, that you know it's usually the breeze. you know that you don't get in pants. Well, a, a particularly gusty day and a, you know a light dress, and everybody's seeing your undies. Oh, suddenly oh, okay. you're flying to the moon. That's right. <laughs> you're away. Off you go. It's like a kite. <laughs> get, get him down. I Look, thought flying to the moon was a euphemism for showing your ass. Yeah. Well, if yeah. The, if it gusts up and you're not wearing underpants. Yep. You're doing that. You are flying to Look, the moon. Pros and cons. It's nice to have the options for sure. Yes. Um, and I do. Yeah. I sh- yeah, that's right. So, Kawashima didn't want to be a bride to one of the suitors 
uh, adoptive father Naniwa tried to organize, but instead wanted to be a warrior like Joan of Arc. Whoa. Saw Joan of Arc as a real hero. According to Dunn, the famous French heroine stirred something in Kawashima, who, as a child in school, told classmates, if I had 3,000 soldiers, I'd take China. Wow. That's all you need, 3,000 3, soldiers. 3,000, yeah. Easy. Uh, the, uh, the adopted father, Naniwa, uh, noted this, uh, writing about it later, was on board with the ambition to, you know, take back what the, was the family's, but sort of- Talked down a bit about the Joan of Arc aspiration, saying dismissively that they wanted to be like that mannish Joan of Arc. Mm-hmm. Funny. According to our mate Barbara Morgan. Barbara Morgan. By 1922, the year of uh, Prince Shanky's death, Kawashi- oh, that's the Prince Shu for you, Dave. Mm-hmm. Prince Shu. Her, her biological father, yes? Yes. Kawashima had become indifferent to their Chinese heritage and was living what was then described as a depraved life. Dunn continues, By the late teenage years, Kawashima discovered an enthusiasm for sex, carrying on a string of affairs. These relationships, as well as a scandalous public image, those Japanese newspapers were lapping it up, Mm. uh, led Naniwa to arrange for a marriage to the Mongol prince Ganjujab. Again, this is another guy who seems to have many different names, depending on- uh, the source, and probably the the country that is talking about him. Uh, but the prince was a son of rebel, a rebel leader who'd enjoyed the support of Prince Shanky. I think uh, this was the same relationship that Shen describes here, but Shen just uses a different name. But it was another, unless there was another Mongol prince that mm-hmm. <laughs> she got set up with at some point. I don't think that's unlikely. Anyway, <laughs> Shen writes, The great turning point for Kawashima's life came with her discovery by the Black Dragon Society, a clique of the Japanese jingoists dreaming of a dream of continental empire and world conquest. So this is a kind of a slightly secret society that wanted Japan to take over the world. Wow. That's right. Presumably including China. Yes. I think that was a, a real starting real point step, for them. Step one. <laughs> Get off the island. <laughs> Uh, particularly an area in the northeast called Manchuria, which is where the Qing dynasty was, you know, until recently ruling over. Mm. Yeah, they also were looking at Mongolia and, yeah, basically eventually everywhere. The world. Yeah. The, uh, the, the long-term goal, world domination. Yes. But just like, you know, when you, you take on such a, goal as big as that Mm. can be too overwhelming Mm. yeah yeah. you know it's too much you you just like how do you track your progress how do you really feel accomplished how do you persevere first item on the list make a list tick tick right (laughs) and then bite-sized pieces of domination and and then you know and it it overall the long-term goal sure world but you gotta you gotta start smaller item two Get first member of army. That's Tick. right. Tick. Yeah. Item three. Yep. Get second member of army. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it's a very long list. Sometimes you get a whole group joining up. I'd still break that down into individual oh, Individual yes. ticks. Yeah. yeah. Tick, 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 tick. Yep. Thank you so much. God, that, feels that feels so, so feels satisfying. Good. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> what, what I like to do is I have, I have like pastel highlighters. They're not as full on. And I like to highlight the items on the list. And so overall, it just looks really satisfying as you go. Mm. And then when it's done, you're like, look at this beautiful rainbow, pastel oh, yeah. rainbow, gorgeous. That's beautiful. So that's just my tip because um, ticking doesn't do it for me. Was this was this um, sort of implanted in us at a young age? Because I remember as a kid, I can't remember what it was exactly, but my mum drew this book and they'd be, she'd have these pictures in it. And I remember one was like an ice cream cone with like 10 scoops on top of each oh. other. And whenever something got done or whatever, I got a little- uh, Star, coloured star sticker, got put in the ice cream and the ice cream got- I got to pick the flavour and colour it in. Oh. And that felt satisfying every yeah. time. Yeah, So, do you think that's- <laughs> Right, but you never got any actual ice cream. No, oh, probably. You just I- got to colour in the picture. Yeah, no. He's never had ice cream. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, they just say so paper. I don't really understand <laughs> the- uh- Yeah, yeah. people get keep banging on about it. I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. That's like, I could get paper anyway. I could lick paper anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have to go to a specific shop to lick paper? The prices of this paper, scoops of paper, who gives a shit? Oh, this, this 300 GSM boysenberry swirl. That's exactly the same as the chalk chip I had last night. It's a bit chewier, that's all. Uh, Shen continues, at first Kawashima was content, 
So this is now in living- In the marriage. In the marriage. Yep. Or, yeah. I don't know exactly the difference, because this one says that she was uh, the Mongolian prince's concubine. Oh. Okay. At first, Kawashima was content. Also, I'm, I'm, I'm saying she sometimes. All the resources say she or mm-hmm. her, but I'm also slightly- Yeah, I don't know exactly, because it was so long ago. But that line about the third gender yeah. also makes me- But anyway- um, but I'm also just kind of thinking, this is just thinking out loud here, They could it be as well that a, a, a woman, say, wearing pants or not wanting to dress really feminine, they were like, well, you, there's clearly something wrong with you. Mm. Wrong, I say in inverted commas. You know, like, so, I oh, which, which clearly, well, I mean, that was what the direct quote from Ka- uh, Kawashima said, that people criticise me and say that I'm perverted. Yeah, and so, so, yeah, so it's, I mean, I don't know. But so, yeah, so sometimes we'll be saying she, that's what I'm quoting from, but um, hard. Hard to say. Hard to say. Such a long time ago, we don't exactly have a direct quote from her or being like, this is how I identify. Exactly, yeah. And it, and it changed throughout their life. Mm. So there were times uh, where they dressed as a man, like day to day, and other times very feminine, you know, like, yeah. Which is sick. Very handy for a spy, i got to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I forgot about the spy <laughs> part. That is really convenient. Yeah. And very convincingly, like, people weren't questioning mm. either way as well. Uh, which is, And it's also someone who is so well known to be yeah. able to sort of disappear into different identities. That's why I'm surprised that you said when they moved to Japan, I was like, oh, what's happened here is they're going to go undercover for their whole life and they've secretly been a Chinese princess this whole time. But it's like, oh, no, the media was there on day one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, taking yeah, photos. Yeah. Like, oh, how are they ever going to be a spy? Yeah, yeah amazing. Pr- Prince Shu obviously sent out a press release. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it didn't take long for Kawashima to tire of this marriage to the Mongolian prince. Being used to the city, they rapidly grew tired of the desert life and impatient with its monotony and boredom. One evening, dressed in scarlet, they raced through the brown desert on a white horse and managed to escape Japan. It's a pretty sick image. Just, like, fled the... I mean, brutal for the prince, but just fled the marriage on horseback. Wow. And fled the country, you know. On horseback. On horseback, back to Japan. (laughs) Don't know what you say at the border control. (laughs) What are you doing? I'm certainly not fleeing a prince's marriage, <laughs> if that's what you're Well, I hope you've got your passport and the horse's passport. <laughs> yeah. Can horses swim that far? They can swim, but- Oh, is it? Yeah, right. It's an island. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many islands, yeah. Did you- Was it always- The Japanese border was not always just Japan, the island, though? Did it ever- Because they took territory onto the mainland as well? I don't know what in what era. I think yeah. in World War Two they're definitely taking on over a lot of China, but- So, let's just say that it was- over one of the land borders, aren't they? Oh, okay. Just so you don't look like an idiot? Yeah. Yeah. Is that too much to ask for that you try and <laughs> look after you? me? <laughs> I've been looking after you for a long time, my friend. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because every now and then it, it'll slip and I'm like, oh, and I go, oh, that must be so hard to keep up that <laughs> mirage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, the Black Dragon Society was like, what a great recruit. A Chinese princess gonna with all these attributes. Yeah. But then- and But they set up this marriage, apparently. Either the adopted father or, or the Black Dragon Society. Or some say that he was a member of the Black yeah, Dragon okay. Society. Some seem to make it look like he didn't approve of what she was up to. But so, um, the uh, Black Dragon Society was pretty annoyed that- they did a runner. Yeah. But apparently also a little bit impressed. Okay. <laughs> Moxie, I think. Yeah, you know, that yeah, sort of yeah. thing. And decided to give Kawashima another role to play as a spy working with the Kwantung Army. Uh, Shen continues, Kawashima's first assignment was an inspection tour of the Northeast under the disguise of a woman teacher or tourist. So, doing these little things, mainly fact-finding, but just sort of taking on a different identity, dressing in a certain disguise and just sort of you know, just listening and asking questions. And apparently just brilliant at it, right? Wow. After that, 
They uh, worked as a spy, making connections with educators and newsmen, worming into the confidence of civil and military authorities in different localities. Uh, The work also included frequenting opium and morphine dens, posing as a Chinese or Korean sex worker to mix with petty officials and officers. It was said that about 400 Japanese spies worked under Kawashima at that time. 400? So, so built up this huge network of spies. Whoa! That's amazing. Yeah. It's it's um, slightly complex because obviously the Japanese empire was pretty brutal and full on. So, you're like, look at these cool spy work they're doing for these this awful regime. Anyway, <laughs> uh, during this time, Kawashima was said to be living a party lifestyle as well, sort of in the early to mid-20s, spending time in Tokyo with numerous wealthy lovers, male and female, before spending time in, in the Paris of the East, Shanghai. Ooh. According to Barbara Morgan... Uh, among the string of new lovers was Major Raikichi Tanaka, head of the Japanese intelligence service in Shanghai. In order to keep his mistress in high style, Tanaka put Kawashima on the Japanese intelligence payroll and into school to learn English. So, uh, Kawashima can speak multiple languages. Yeah. Some of this stuff is, is might be slightly out of order as well because- Again, all the resources. Slightly different. Slightly different. Yeah. One key target at the time, as I mentioned before, for the Imperial Japanese Army was the area known as Manchuria. They saw this as the rightful possession of the Japanese Empire. So, it's basically the northeastern region of China, the bit right next to Korea. For a bit of context, historian Kali J. Pinsky wrote briefly about the region's volatile and sometimes controversial history. And I'll use Kelly's writing here to summarize this a little bit. I found it interesting, but uh, hopefully uh, it makes sense the way I say it here. So <laughs> <laughs> that can all- be said of an entire report. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm it- not understanding anything you've said. <laughs> <laughs> there is because yeah, it, I mean, I'm I'm going to breeze over centuries of yeah. of a, a region changing hands, being conquered and taken over by different parties. And these things are kind of complex. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe a little, uh, it's like a, you're breezing through, it's a recap. Quick oh, recap. That's previously what we need. on Manchuria. It's a previously <laughs> yeah. on. I love a previously on. <laughs> so, Sad bloopers, and I'm happy. Uh, Jay Pinsky writes uh, Manchuria has a long history of conquering and being conquered by its southwestern neighbor, China. The name Manchuria or Manchuria is controversial in itself. Like uh, all these, when a pizza land's being fought over and <laughs> both sides have a different name for it. Mm. Sorry, I heard pizza land. <laughs> this pizza land. That's when a pizza land. Yeah. Which, I mean, Italy takes all the credit for it, but actually <laughs> Manchuria <laughs> is pizza, pizza land. land. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the controversy. <laughs> so the name comes from the European adoption of the Japanese name Manchu which the Japanese began to use in the 19th century. Imperial Japan wanted to pry that area free from Chinese influence, which is what we're talking about. The so-called Manchu people themselves, as well as the Chinese, did not use this term, though, and is considered by some problematic, given its connections with Japanese imperialism. Chinese sources generally call it the Northeast or the three Northeast provinces. I mean, that's the English translation, obviously. Mm. Nonetheless, Manchuria is still considered to be the standard name for northeastern China in the English language, which is, you know, classic English language, isn't it? Uh, It seems like the region has a long and complicated history with many ethnic groups calling it home over the years and different empires rising and falling there. According to Jay Pinsky, the first empire to unite all or nearly all of Manchuria was the Liao dynasty from 907 CE. Another Liao tributary people, the Jurchen, overthrew the Liao dynasty in 1125. So, they they ruled for a bit over 100 years there. And they formed the Jin dynasty. The Jin would go on to rule much of northern China and Mongolia from 1115 to 1234 CE. So, they had it for... Bit over a hundred years before being conquered by the rising Mongol Empire under Genghis Khan. Then, after the Mongols, Yuan Dynasty in China fell in 1368. A new ethnic Han Dynasty, Han Chinese Dynasty, arose called the Ming. The Ming were able to assert control over Manchuria and forced the Jurchens and other local people to pay tribute to them. But then it sounds like when unrest broke out late in the Ming Dynasty, they invited the Jurchen or Manchu, two names that people are known as, 
uh, mercenaries from there or warriors to come help them fight in their civil war. But according to Jay Pinsky, instead of defending the Ming, the Manchus conquered all of China in 1644, forming a new empire which was called uh, and ruled by the Qing dynasty, which would be the last imperial Chinese dynasty and lasted until 1911, which is sort of where our story began. Yeah, right. So that's... That's about a thousand years. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. hands. A little recap. Love that. I guess like your ideal scenario is that you're in charge and born in the middle bit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Where you're on top. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't yeah, yeah. Worry. <laughs> you're in the yeah, you don't if if you're a if a dynasty is a loaf of bread, yeah. you don't want to be one of the crusts. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Not. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes the crusts. No. Be- well said. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to put it in terms. Yeah. Which uh, Jess, who isn't able to eat many carbs right now, yeah. would enjoy. <laughs> Love to think about bread. <laughs> uh, so, when the Qing dynasty fell, the reigning emperor named Po Yi became the final Qing dynasty monarch. He became emperor at the age of two in 1908. Mm. Good and time. It, Perfect for the job. Yeah. That's weird that they fell during the reign of a toddler <laughs> emperor. <laughs> You know? I imagine someone else is looking after it, but it's very funny to think about Po Yi being like, um, what's on the agenda today? Yeah, that's our two-year-old's talk. <laughs> um, um, okay. So Thanks for being we- here, everyone. Thanks for Okay, Dad. Oh, sorry, quiet down. Quiet oh, down. Hey, I rule with an iron fist, okay? <laughs> okay, that's enough. I will not take any insubordination, please. It's your last warning. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> what do you mean? You reckon you're going to beat me with a, an arm wrestle? <laughs> Oh no! I didn't. I didn't okay this. A thumb war. Guards. I can hardly move my thumbs. Yeah, they don't have the fine can, motor skills. Yeah, toddlers move thumbs. I don't think so. I don't think toddlers have thumbs. You're right. When do you get thumbs? That's uh, puberty, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's before school. Oh, okay. probably around four. Get thumbs around four. Get thumbs. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is it hooves at the start? <laughs> yeah, they they split off into they have digits. The other fingers. Oh, right. Four oh. fingers. You just don't have thumbs. So they're cleft. They've got cloven hoofs. Cloven hoofs, yes. Is that the right, am I using the right terminology? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Po Yi, this uh, toddler monarch, was on the throne there when uh, the <laughs> dynasty fell. I think he was probably five or six. It's funny, all so over these So, is he in a throne or in a high chair? High chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ca- well, I call it a throne, but yes. <laughs> Look, it's got wheels and everything. <laughs> It's a pram. <laughs> <laughs> mate, it's a pram. All right. You're I will a, not take any you're more You're in a stroller, <laughs> mate. Okay. That's enough insubordination. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold up something shiny to yeah. distract the- hey, Oh, what's the this? Keys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what's this? The keys. <laughs> That's why they called it the Qing Dynasty, because of the sound the keys made. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, he was forced to abdicate from- the throne when the empire fell in and 1911. A decision he definitely understood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, I understand. <laughs> okay, but can I still watch movies tonight? <laughs> can I still watch Peppa Pig? <laughs> Do I still have to have a bath? <laughs> well, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that brings us back to kind of where we started when the Qing Dynasty fell and the princess spy was born. Kawashima is thought to have played a key role in Japan trying to take back control of the region. According to Dan, in 1931, Japanese officers planted a, a weak bomb, Dunn calls it, so under train tracks outside the city of Shenyang, accusing Chinese saboteurs of placing it, using that as a pretext to invade. Mm. Oh, false flag, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what a false flag is. What I does hear it- that term a lot. And I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I don't know why I'm asking it live on the podcast. Maybe I'll edit this out so I don't look silly. <laughs> it's like like a, an operation where, like, you know, you shoot at your own people or something and go, oh, my God, they're shooting at us. We better go get them. Right. We better- oh, the pretext for, like, you know, invasion. But what or- does a weak bomb sound like? A weak bomb. With yeah, weak. Oh yeah, with W E A K. It yeah. wasn't a really long no, <laughs> explosion. I did think that at first. Yes, but like a a weak bomb. Because you're the Double man. E would be. <laughs> and that would go on for quite a so while. So it gives you a bit of time to get a clear the and area. And then you know, day four. <laughs> <laughs> and then by day six, it's going back down again. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sort of fizzling out a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But a weak bomb like W-E-A-K. But a weak bomb goes. 
<laughs> wow. Oh, who did that? Oh, yeah. Oh, the who Chinese? All oh, right. Okay, In great. We go. In we go. The Chinese farted. <laughs> we, we, better farted. we better invite. We better invite. This is disrespect. We will not stand for it. This bath doesn't have jets anymore. I know it was a fart. <laughs> Do you fart in the bath? <laughs> <laughs> Do you find the bath? <laughs> Maybe we should call this episode a great title find the bath. for a podcast. <laughs> find the bath. I mean, it will seem people will be listening the first half hour. Going, Why is this episode called a fart in the bath? <laughs> well, now they'd know. There's your context, people. <laughs> 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 and that's why they invaded. It's still not relevant to the story, but I guess it makes sense why they named the episode that. Fart in the bath. Fart in the bath. So, yeah, they've they've used a false flag. Thank you so much, Dave, for really broadening out my vocabulary by about 30%. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> 10% per word. <laughs> so, and this work, they- they did invade based on this bomb, apparently. And some say this Japanese invasion of Manchuria was the beginning of the Second Sino-Japanese War. Right. Mm. Back to the question. Here we go. Uh, though others say it started six years later okay. with the Marco Polo Bridge incident. All right. But is that Morgan saying that? Because we don't trust <laughs> Barbara Morgan. <laughs> no, that, that does, that's just depending on who you ask, which I think- And I'm if- asking Barbara Morgan. <laughs> okay. I don't think Barbara Morgan represents either China or Japan, but- um, Okay. I don't- I didn't read into it. What do you reckon the Marco Polo bridge incident was like? I just assume there's the pool under the bridge. Yeah. All <laughs> oh, right. Fish Japan- out of water. Japan's probably in the water. Yeah. China's going, Marco. Japan's going, Polo. Yeah, but then they're sn- using that to- s- while China's got their eyes closed to sneak over the bridge. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Paolo, still here, still here, still here. <laughs> <laughs> and really good in. at throwing their voice. Really good. <laughs> really still good. Still here, still here. Uh, so, yeah, that one. Oh, no, I've got written here that was a battle <laughs> during <laughs> July 1937 <laughs> in Beijing between China's National Revolutionary Army. They were the ones yelling at Marco. Yep. <laughs> and the Imperial Japanese Army. Polo. Polo. Right. Fantastic. That's basically what we said. Oh, yeah, it is too. <laughs> Good guess. Uh, writing years later in his memoirs, Major Raikichi Tanaka, who I mentioned before, is one of the, the majors who was working uh, with Kawashima, mm-hmm. po- possibly, you know, in terms of uh, the war, spying, and also in the bedroom. Um, it's work. <laughs> the way I do it. <laughs> <laughs> the way Major Raikichi Tanaka does it. Uh, takes that business attitude. <laughs> but, yeah, this this one isn't backed up anywhere else. Just in his memoirs, uh, Tanaka claims credit for a whole bunch of violent riots and brawls that are now known as the Shanghai Incident, saying that uh, he ordered Kawashima to travel around to pay workers and thugs to start these brawls oh. to create basically a ruckus. To uh, so that um, attention would be diverted and the Japanese would be able to just move in, which did happen, but- Oh, so they just created only, distractions. Yeah, only Tanaka- I don't think anyone else says that Tanaka was- the, it was his brainchild, oh, okay. but in his memoir, he's like, yeah, that was one of <laughs> That's mine. That's all me. I did it. I did it all. But uh, whoever's plan it was, it worked, and the Japanese troops' uh, position in China was further strengthened. When the Japanese had control of Manchuria, they now wanted it to appear legitimate, so they needed a figurehead to front it. And Kawashima played a key role in persuading the young deposed Qing Emperor Po Yi to take the role. Now, no longer a toddler. Oh, he was coming the, back. The yeah. toddler king, now a, in his 20s. Oh. Hmm. Um, but so- still- Sitting in a high chair. Still sitting in a high chair. Hey, it's, yeah. how, it's the only way he knows how to king. <laughs> That's right. He, has a he good got view. back in the nappy. Yeah, he's like, all right, I got to get back into it. His parents are like, oh, I thought that whole toddler thing was a phase that he'd grow out of. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> Most do, but- <laughs> not, not our him, boy. Not our boy. Not our special boy. Who wants to be our boy? Yeah, yeah, when you try and be a king, you pick up where you left off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he actually, there was one time he uh, was briefly reinstalled to the throne, but that lasted like 11 days, I think. Nice. Uh, so this he kept is- shitting on the throne. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this isn't going like, to work. We have toilets. <laughs> Come on. Uh, but he's sort of the, now the figurehead of the, the Japanese invasion. Yeah. Because they so- want to. They're, they're saying that they'll put him back. Yeah. So the Japanese are promising him like it'll be legitimate. Yeah, you'll be. This will be the you'll beginning be emperor, of yeah. you. You, you know, taking your family's position back at the and you know taking back over most You're of right. China. And we want nothing, nothing in kind. No. We are doing this because you deserve to be king. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> And he was believing it. Apparently, a lot of people close to him were like, they're full of shit. 
Come on, man. I listen to him, but he's like, no, I, you know, he was, you know, either depending on who you ask, he was like, I just want to be ruler again. Right. And others were like, he was just very naive. Naive, Because I guess for the the Japanese, he's probably still got some supporters in China that want him back, right? So, is it- it would win over some of the- Yeah, it's not just some new guy. Yeah. There's legitimacy. He was yeah. once the ruler. Yeah, we're not another country taking you over. We're putting your guy back on. Yeah, mm. certainly yeah. not a, p- a puppet of ours. Yeah. <laughs> Look, your hands are up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How am I doing this with my hands up here? <laughs> Look, I'll drink a glass of water. I swear to God. Look, he's talking right now. <laughs> so, yeah, Kawashima helped convince him to take on the role, though. And that this was sort of part of, well, they thought, you know, this is restoring their family's Qing dynasty to the seat of power. So, saw it as achieving that goal. And Po Yi was uh, Kawashima's, I think, you know, cousin, part of the same family. Uh, but, yeah, unfortunately, as it turned out, the Japanese just wanted him there to prop up a puppet regime. Uh, and they renamed the area Manchukyo. So, it's just a slight mm-hmm. change. Mm. Uh, according to Birnbaum... Some of Po Yi's advisors objected to this plan, like I said, fearing he would have no recourse once under the control of the Japanese. Family members also were opposed to his alliance with the Japanese and fearing that he might submit to the enemy. Yet Po Yi allowed himself to be won over by Japanese promises, later saying, I was too far carried away by my dream of restoration to heed any warnings. He believed that one day he would be proclaimed emperor there and rule a unified China again. Instead, as had been predicted, he found himself immediately diminished, subject to Japanese orders. Oh, dear. Mm. And it sounds like even, you know, he went around and, and it, later, when it all fell apart, I don't know if you know how World War II ended, but what? when- Well, no spoilers, but- <laughs> I didn't know it had ended. <laughs> huh. I, I, didn't oh, get, I didn't see that in the news. Oh. I didn't see that in the Did news. they cover it? Just in brief, uh, it didn't go great for Japan. Oh. Okay. But they, yeah, and so after that happened, he was like, yeah, I regret all that. I was naive, but, you know, that was when now China's back in control. and Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't like them. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought, I thought this was for the good. We were doing, I thought, I did this for you. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> I right? can't believe you didn't get it. That's actually pretty embarrassing. That's embarrassing for, for you. Yeah. Not, not Po Yi, for Po Yu. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm always joking, see? See? That's another one of my bits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny. Uh, it sounds like Yoshiko Kawashima. Also privately criticised Po Yi for being too easily influenced by the Japanese. At the same time, Kawashima's star in the Japanese army continued to rise. According to Dunn, now a dashing soldier in Manchukuo, Kawashima led an army of several thousand irregular cavalry troopers to suppress Chinese resistance fighters. You know that army- They only wanted 3,000. The army dream, it's happening. Wow. Yeah. Uh, about 5,000, I think. Right, Fantastic. so more than they wanted. Yeah. More than they needed, I yeah, should say, yeah. sorry. They've got a surplus of soldiers. You're going to say yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I, like- I need three, but if you look, if you want to give me five, that's fine. Yeah, just head to the back. That way, I suppose I can give better, like, days off. Yeah. and but We, <laughs> we can uh, work ten on four off, and that'd be nice. And I'll probably need a couple of days off myself now because I've got a lot of ticking to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually going to take me ages. (laughs) Dunn continues, Japanese officials were eager to use Kawashima as a public relations figurehead. By 1933, a popular novel, The Beauty in Men's Clothing, was written about Kawashima. (laughs) It presented a fictionalised exotic account of Kawashima's activities, creating a haze around the truth. So, it was sort of, it was hard to know where the truth stopped. It's fan fiction. Stopped and, yeah, basically. Yeah. Is it written by Barbara Morgan? Barbara, Barbara Morgan. Morgan. <laughs> Barbara Morgan is a real person and I can, as as far as I know, a fantastic journalist. <laughs> yeah. And a fantastic thing to say. Like, I'm just having a great time. Big yeah. Barbara Morgan fan yeah. over here. Love yeah, it. big Barbara, Barbara Morgan. Morgan fan. So, Kawashima would return, would return on occasion to Japan, appearing on radio shows and even released an album of Mongolian folk songs. Okay. Kawashima- was a big star. Doing it all. What? But, but at the same time, not ideal as a spy. To be releasing to such a, number one albums. <laughs> like, and, and books being written about you like, yeah, yeah, yeah. such a great spy. Yeah. <laughs> Here's so some of the outfits. Good. Yeah. yeah. Here's heaps of pictures. <laughs> Album is called I Am A Spy. <laughs> yeah. But these activities, as well as being the leader of this army, continued Kawashima's widespread fame in Japan with newspapers 
dubbing the princess as the Joan of Arc of Manchukuo. Must have been, must have felt good. Because that's the hero your, growing up. Your childhood yeah, hero. Yeah, that's who, that's who they, you know, aspire oh God, to be. I, I could be the David Suchet of Melbourne. <laughs> my gosh. I mean, we've already had the Paris of the East as well. <laughs> I love a, the something of the something. It's yeah. Fantastic. yeah. Yeah. Especially when it's something so small, like the David Suchet, mm. <laughs> which I don't I don't know how you're even going to get there. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Exactly. I couldn't even do that. I don't even know who I would want to be, you know? What are the the Dolly Parton of the I knew you'd say East? Dolly, but I can't sing. Oh, yeah. But you could have a theme park. That's oh, my God. The other thing Dolly's famous oh, for. Oh, Perkins World. <laughs> See, that sucks. Bop mm. World sounds better. Bop World? <sighs> yeah. It's not as good as Dollywood. Bop- Boppywood. Boppywood. Okay, I take that back. That's great. Okay. <laughs> That's really good. Boppy's World instead of Wobby's World? <laughs> Boppy's World. <laughs> it works locally. That's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. Gumbopper Park. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute, actually. I like Gumbopper. Gumbapa Park, where the fun just never ends. <laughs> uh, it's uh, Sally did end. Oh, D- is that the one that closed? No, that's Wobby's World closed, closed down. Is Gumbaya Gumbaya Park. Gumbaya Park still it's there? Now re- is it a re- sort of a, had a bit of a rebrand? Oh, that, is that Gumbaya World? Yeah. yeah, a rebrand. I say they've taken over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> their forms are in kingdom. The Imperial Gumbaya Army forces. <laughs> uh, so, despite Kawashima's allegiance is clearly lying with Japan. They still tried to straddle a fine line between this split identity being both a Chinese princess and a Japanese spy superstar. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even sure whose wow. side they're on now. Who, uh, oh, it's not clear. They do, they do it all. It seems like they are mainly spying for Japan, but it, it does seem like there's blurred lines. Yeah. And which did end up making both sides kind of think they were working on the other side as well. Which Right. Not good help. to have both of your sides think that. Yeah. Hang on, you working for the other other people? Yeah, exactly. Uh oh. In one speech, Kawashima said, "As commander, I've ventured out into the hail of gunfire a number of times, and I, I indeed have sustained three bullet wounds. But when I think about it, I see that friend or foe, we are all brothers. Japanese, Chinese. I know we have our differences of opinion. Some of you might shoot me, but I still think of you and I as brothers. Right? Yeah. Really straddling the fine line between both sides. <laughs> yeah, keeping everyone happy. Yeah, yeah. I love you all. I don't love shoot you me. all." Shoot me once. Shame on me. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> Shoot me twice. Can't get fooled again. Can't get fooled again. <laughs> Brother. Brother. <laughs> Remember, Dave, you're not allowed to say that. I didn't say it. Oh, now no. watch this drive. <laughs> <laughs> now watch this drive. I like, I think in our, in uh, Do Go On Canon, we've merged two Bushisms together. That's two. That's, that back is back a, to back. that's a super cut, isn't it? That's a, yeah. He's a, in one, sir. He's doing a press conference and another one, he's- on a golf course. It would be so weird at the press conference if you said, now watch this drive. <laughs> but it, that was basically a press conference because it was sort of like a, a jump cut. To, he was- You didn't even necessarily know he was at a golf course based on the first shot. Oh, it yeah. Was it's a pullback and reveal. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I've been on a golf course this whole time. But I think in the in the movie we write about his life- That's one. We're going to just merge them that's all into all. one. He's yeah, going to put all. food on families. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's going to not be fooled again. And then, and then he's going to- and then he'll have a shoe thrown at him. Yes. He was the one who had a shoe thrown at him. Pretty sure. I thought that was Julia Gillard, or maybe everyone was throwing shoes back then. <laughs> who Wait, throws that, a shoe? I thought that was Honestly. Austin Powers. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you, you are. Yeah, I think you're Don't, right. I'm sure Bushel, you're- geez, was the 90s just big for shoe throwing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a Wikipedia article called George W. Bush Shoeing Incident. <laughs> Maybe. And it is extensive. And we thought Prince Shu died, but maybe. <laughs> he lives on. Faked his death. Wow. Was at that press conference. Uh, yeah, the 90s was just big for shoe drama. There was also the shoe bomber, I believe. Yes. The ni- that was the 90s as well, I believe. Or maybe, no, that would have been early 2000s. Anyhow, correspondent Shen talks about the different identities Kawashima used as a spy writing. In the dim, passion-fated atmosphere of ballrooms, Kawashima was now known as the dancing girl Wan Sen Pei, using this cover story to gather information. For a similar purpose, Kawashima opened a restaurant in Tianjin in 1936. The restaurant drove a roaring business. Apparently, <laughs> it became a real hotspot. That's amazing. Just it's like I love these stories that we sometimes wow. tell, where one person just does, just hits like 
a million different peaks. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. At one point, I had the hottest restaurant in town. Yeah, which for most people would be their crowning achievement. Yeah, but this is just a footnote. Yeah, yeah. it sound like a Chinese princess slash Japanese spy slash accidental restaurateur, <laughs> <laughs> celebrity chef. <laughs> but do you think it would be kind of annoying because like you want this to be your cover, but now you're having to do like you know you're employing fifty people, yeah, people yeah. Are asking for time off, and you're like, F- I don't fucking know. <laughs> I've never run a restaurant. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking win a war over yeah, here. Yeah. What's You're on the special for Thursdays off? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, jeez. Do- you want to do night classes? <laughs> I don't think Kawashima had a huge hands on roll, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. But apparently would- <laughs> Fucking on it up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> but apparently um, would often visit the restaurant, uh, according to Shen- uh, in splendid uniform, accompanied by multiple bodyguards under the guise of General Wang. <laughs> what? As in, like, that's a, their It name. was a disguise. Yeah, the disguise. disguise. They would visit their own restaurant yeah. in disguise as, as somebody else. And yeah. everyone would go- oh, Well, they're like- still sort of undercover all the time. <laughs> the fucking boss is here again. <laughs> it's Gen- undercover boss. That was the first episode. <laughs> Gen- <laughs> Gen- <laughs> I love undercover Wang. boss. It's so good. General Wang. It's yeah, great. the original name of, you know, like- I mean, the American version is based on the original Chinese version, yeah. General Wang. <laughs> <laughs> but a, a, a writer at the time described General Wang as capable of speaking perfect Mandarin and other Chinese dialects, perfect Japanese and English, what? and having a square face and broad eyebrows. Kawashima really was the master of disguise, wow. which the- um, the movie Master of Disguise was, was actually based, based on. on yeah. Wow. The life Did Kawashi- of General Wang. Kawashima ever dress as a turtle? <laughs> yeah, a very turtley turtle. <laughs> but I've what- never seen it. Am I not turtley enough for the turtle enough? club? I love we, uh, Dana Carvey. We watched that movie at Robbie Bowen's thirteenth birthday sleepover party, and even for us, it was bad. Oh, you know, really? Like the bar is so low. For oh, you would assume that kids would love yeah. it. Even though we were left going, we got that from Blockbuster? That was our overnight special? What has Garth done? <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, party on. No, thank you. Yeah, it feels like really Dana Carvey should have had a much bigger movie career than he did. Mm. And I blame- There's still time. Yes. 100%. That's what point. I have to say. Point well made. Um <laughs> While riding high through the 1930s, Kawashima's reign started- I'll just read it as I've written it. I started reading it a bit differently and I tried to improvise and the yeah. same since ran out of steam. <laughs> a bit, bit, about that, <laughs> a bit of flair. <laughs> bit of improvised a jazz. Bit about, <laughs> a bit about- uh, <laughs> I'm trying to jump back in. I can't be- a bit about, It's like 20 minutes. Uh, a bit, bit, a bit about- A bit about- uh, <laughs> the crooner. <laughs> While riding, <laughs> yeah. it gets more and more desperate. And oh, fuck, I think it's fuck. Oh fuck. Oh no. Oh no. Please, please. Oh my god. So why spend hours writing a report if you're just going to riff it anyway? <laughs> While riding high through the 1930s, by the end of the decade, things were getting tougher for Kawashima. Now too publicly visible to be useful as a spy, the Japanese army was also growing tired of Yoshiko's increasingly critical tone against the Japanese military's policies in Manchukuo. I've switched between the two names, Kawashima and Yoshiko, just for a bit of variety. Okay, great. So, that's the same person. Same person. But they're on the out because, one, they're too famous to be a spy, and two, they're now talking shit about (laughs) the people they're spying for. (laughs) That's a couple of reasons. A couple of good reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) You're a bit too famous and well-known to be a credible spy, and also, you keep shitting all over us. I heard what you said. (laughs) You know you're quite famous. (laughs) The newspapers are reporting it all. (laughs) Oh, how do you hear about this? No, I didn't say that. General Wang said <laughs> yeah, that. That was General Wang. It's that's a General character. Wang, yeah. If I say anything offensive in character, that's not me. Yeah. <laughs> All right? The character's problematic, not me. I love playing General Wang. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's also an interview just like in the actor's studio or something. <laughs> yeah. With Kawashima going, I love playing General Wang because yeah. it means I can say the things that Kawashima can't that's say. That's right. <laughs> uh, things were starting to go awry professionally, obviously. But also, personally, uh, Kawashima had now become addicted to morphine and opium and started suffering from syphilis. Things were getting a bit rough. Wow. That's a lot 
to that's a lot going on. Yeah. Yes. So um I think possibly the morphine addiction came after being shot by one of their own troops. Um and then using the painkillers and then becoming addicted. That's yeah. what one of the sources mm. said. And yeah, living a pretty sex positive life, uh picked up syphilis somewhere along the way as well. Which one is syphilis? But I think it's it's a, a not a good one. Syphilis is uh, syphilis. Okay. Mm, it's, it's the ba- one Lord Byron got, right? It's bad. <laughs> it's the most. I think so. It seems like the kind of, It's just an old-timey one, but it, I think it can start to affect your, your head. Yeah, mental capacity is really wow. affected over time. It's been, been cured now, though, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I also get- <laughs> You know, yeah. have had sex. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I probably have it. <laughs> you have it heaps. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. It's very sex positive over there. So, I probably, if anything, have, you know, have got so much syphilis that it's cancelled itself out. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get foot again. <laughs> <laughs> so, now on the outs with the Japanese military, according to Dunn, Yoshiki ran a blackmailing racket to extort money from wealthy Chinese citizens before being placed under house arrest. <laughs> At one point, General Hayao Tata, an actual general, <laughs> rumoured to be another one of their lovers, even attempted to have Kawashima killed. Oh, Jesus. So, there were sort of hits out on, on them and, um, yeah, it was just a- uh, It was- things were going south, basically. Yeah, it doesn't Uh-oh. sound great. It kind of seems like once Kawashima's usefulness was uh, over- mm. uh, was sort of started struggling to find any powerful allies- Whereas there were so many earlier. And, uh, yeah, now both sides are kind of suspecting the princess of spying right, for and, the other side. Right, and they're also blackmailing high-profile people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're turning everyone into an enemy here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's just to make ends meet sort of thing. Right, okay. Need the money, yeah. And in the meantime, this conflict between Japan and, and China, the second Sino-Japanese war, Rolled on into World War Two, you know. The rest of the world was getting in on the act, which is still going. Yeah, so we're we're in the late thirties into the forties. Thirty nine is when World War Two officially kicked off. Oh, is that right? That's right. At nineteen thirty nine till present. Then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so till, thing, till question mark. <laughs> things are getting a little grim. So I, I think just go on a slight detour here for a bit of fun. According to Dunn, in nineteen forty one, Kawashima was exhausted, lonely, and adrift. That's not the fun bit. But the next line <laughs> that Dunn wrote caught my attention. Okay. Kawashima was exhausted, lonely, and adrift with yeah. only pet monkeys for company. <laughs> okay. How can you be lonely yeah. if you have- And it's monkeys. Monkeys. Yeah, that's multiple. How many are we yeah, talking? Multiple monkeys. Started as three, then oh, wow. one of them had another one, so it became four. That's fun. When three uh- became four. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, did you, you know Spice Girls covered an old Chinese Mongolian <laughs> That's about right. I don't think they were- About monkeys. It was originally I about monkeys. I never thought yeah. they were writing their own stuff, mate. Let's yeah. put it that way. Okay. Um, you got four monkeys and you're lonely and adrift. Yeah. You got four monkeys. Yeah. Okay. Are they adrift on some sort of like floating island or what's going on? They're here? on a barge They're in a international barge. waters. Yeah, so they're having a good time. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, uh, luckily, uh, Burbaum wrote a bit. About this monkey business. Right. Boom. <laughs> but I'm afraid that's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum. Uh, but the uh, there's other resources that talk about uh, Yoshiko being seen out in public with a monkey on the shoulder, <sighs> which is pretty sick. Yes. Wish uh, I could teach my dog to sit on my shoulder. Do you think that might be a syphilis symptom? Having a monkey on your shoulder? <laughs> monkey on your back? Can't shake it. <laughs> No, I literally have a monkey on my also, back. Also, perfect for a spy. You want to go undercover. You walk yeah. down the street. You, you want, want to just blend draw attention to yourself. In. Got but, a monkey on the shoulder. But maybe the monkey is also collecting. Uh, the monkey is wearing a trench coat and a hat. So. Oh, like that little monkey from Indiana Jones. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, spoiler. Bad dates, am I right? Uh, no, that means nothing to you, but you should watch it because it, that, that's definitely the primate part of the, okay. the movie. I bet was there some sort of a blind date scenario for the monkey. Yeah, it didn't go well. Oh, oh, no. They did no. not get a second date. Oh, oh, no. That's a shame. They're a great conversationalist, but they're not, not a good no first spark. impression. You know, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, no connection. Yeah. Oh, well. That's, you, you don't take that personally. Yeah, you find the right person for you. That's right. Someone else who's not good at talking. Yeah, and you can not talk Maybe forever. Maybe not a monkey. Start there. <laughs> Um, so, according to Birnbaum, Birnbaum, Yoshiko had four monkeys called Fukichan, Monchan, Daiko, and Chibi. They lived together in the Sano Hotel, then one of the rare Western-style hotels in Tokyo. Dunstan checks in. Yeah, <laughs> Is it Dunstan? Another, yeah, another rip-off. <laughs> and they changed it from four monkeys to one orangutan. 
I mean, come on. Come on. Hollywood, you've lost it. You've lost the plot, Hollywood. <laughs> they changed It'd Kawashima for a bit. George from Seinfeld. <laughs> In addition to tending to her monkeys, Yoshiko busied herself in Tokyo with more urgent projects, like arranging a ceasefire between China and Japan. That was one, that was on the to-do list. That's a great little project. Yeah. Uh, Just chip away at it. And the Japanese master going, come on, this is annoying. Stop. Why would we want a ceasefire? We're in the right, you know? Mm. We're just taking over the world. You don't do that with a ceasefire. <laughs> yeah. So, they repeatedly phoned the home of Tojo Hideki, then army minister, um, saying, I would like to serve as the bridge of peace between China and Japan, telling Tojo's wife, if they will escort me to Japan's front line, I can help. I know a lot of Chiang Kai-shek's generals. Tojo refused to take the calls, though, telling his wife, Japan is not far gone, that we need to depend on help from someone so feeble. Do you know what feeble means, fuckhead? <laughs> <laughs> Like, if all the people yeah. you could call feeble, you're picking someone known as Chinese princess, Japanese spy, yeah. and restaurateur? Yeah. I yeah, mean, come, come on. on. A yeah. feeble person could not do one of those things. But doing all three. Yeah. That Honestly, is not feeble. Apologize for the language, but mate, get lost. <laughs> Whoa, Maddie, Maddie, Maddie. Hey, make like a tree and then get fuck out of it. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think Tojo's a bit of a prick. All right. Okay. I said it. Okay. Right. okay. All right. <laughs> no need to get worked up, bud. It's all right. Some apologize. It's okay. Take a big so, breath. You're okay. Oh, yeah. It's got steam coming out of the body years. <laughs> Put me just five minutes alone with this Tojo prick. <laughs> wow. What would you do? Oh, bit of chin music for starters. Ooh. Bowling, bowling short stuff. I'd play cricket with him. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Bambaum continues. <laughs> Kawashima says that when hearing the news about Pearl Harbor on the radio, they came to the immediate realization that Japan would lose. Like, just like, oh, you've made a real big mistake here. Or you bloody pack of drongos. Wow. Dojo. <laughs> so, who, who came to that realization? Kawashima. Wow. Oh, like, you like, fucking idiot. I, t- I was going to help. And you've, this is, you've instead brought the US into the war. Have you lost it? If you ever had it, Tojo. <laughs> Mate, you're a joke. <laughs> that Strong words, words, Matthew. Words. Wow. Kawashima's words, I assume. I know, but jeez Louise. <laughs> Come on, you don't have to is quote a, everything they say. This is a family-friendly podcast. Tojo, more like Tojoke, <laughs> is something that Kawashima may have said. Well, well. <laughs> Tojo, more like Tojerk. Yeah. Tojo, more like toe fuck off <laughs> is something. Tojo, more, more like toe take a walk off a- a, a long short walk pier off and a make it pier. long. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and while you're at it, keep walking. Yeah. It's something they might have said. <laughs> keep walking till you're wet, mate. Yeah. Till your toes get wet, toe Joe. Yeah. Until your toes go Joe into the water, bro. <laughs> okay. It's something I've they might piece. have said. It's something they might have said. <laughs> you know what they're saying to Tojo's wife is like, he still won't take your call. <laughs> okay. I've, well, t- I've, I've written it. I've taken a note. I've written all of that. Can you read t- that back to me? <laughs> <laughs> Just pass on a message, all right? Message. <laughs> well, that's just some of the. That's just something she that might have said. Yeah, massive, yeah. Oh, oh, Kawashima is not busy enough that every now and then they don't misspeak a little. Yeah, that's right. They know several languages. Sometimes you just miss up a little word. Yeah. Like Jess, that. more like jerk. <laughs> <laughs> something they might have said. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing anyway? So yeah. So, but, but the princess has heard on the radio. Pearl Harbor's happened. Yes, and they're like, they're going to lose. Does that make them think? I don't want to be on their side anymore mm. anyway. Yeah. Well, sort of was out of their hands by this point. Oh, okay. But, yeah, um, kind of. Uh, but they said the reasons why Japan was doomed was because of the arrogant, blind conceit of the military. They did not understand the true facts about the United States. And at the same time, they had excessive faith in their own abilities. Basically said, guys, Japan, Tojo, you're dreaming. Right? Frequently on the move, Yoshiko, the princess- Sorry that I switched between first and last names a bit. Yoshiko or Kawashima or the princess move mm-hmm. once again. Or the spy. With the monkeys in tow. Oh, great. Or Major Wang. <laughs> <laughs> this time to Japanese occupied Beijing. They're known as Peiping or Peeping. According to Bernbaum, at last, once Japan's defeat seemed inevitable, the perpetual traveler Yoshiko refused to budge. The dangers awaiting in China after Japan's loss were obvious to anyone who cared to think about the princess's welfare. 
but perhaps the realization was made that once the war was over, there would not be a refuge in Japan either. Basically, like I could I could run back to Japan, but I think I'm in trouble either way. The war, oh, I, okay. I, Japan's yeah. going down. I think I'm done. Yeah, they're not sure. Either naively, just like I'll be right here in in uh, China, or I know where else would I my go? My fate is sealed. Yeah. Uh, Shen continues, while in Beijing, Kawashima usually dressed up like a Manchu nobleman in a long cape, satin boots, and a skull cap with white or green jade knot. Talking later about wearing men's clothes, uh, Kawashima once said, The colour in a man's dress is a protective colour for me. Formerly, I received scores of nonsensical love letters daily. The number has been greatly reduced since I found a protective colour. Basically, the protective colour of being men's clothes. Yeah. Uh, Shen continues, the life in Beijing was, I love, just quickly, I love that sort of humble brag. I was Formerly obsessed. I received scores of nonsensical love Could letters. not walk down the street <laughs> without people proposing. <laughs> not beating him off with a fucking stick. Oh, it's exhausting. This way, I just get to, you know, have a bit of anonymity. Yeah. People leave me the fuck alone. Men time is me time. Yeah. Uh, and, but it does sound like that was, you know, that was pretty true. People would just like, just in love. Bombard them. You're picturing, like, cartoon love hard eyes. Yes, yep. <laughs> Coming out of their heads. Yeah. Going, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exhausted. That would be- Oh, that would be brutal. Just trying to get a chai latte. Yeah. <laughs> Do you on. mind? All right, please. Uh, Shen continues, the life in Beijing was one of long debauchery and sensuality. Ooh. Kawashima had a number of lovers who incessantly quarreled for greater favours from her. Kawashima was held in awe by the Japanese gendarmes. Uh, one word from Kawashima was enough to restore freedom to any Chinese arrested by the gendarmes or cause death to them. Oh. Like, picture a bit of a thumb action, yeah. up or down, which way is it going to be? There was one story where one of these uh, gendarmes disrespected Kawashima's driver. So, Kawashima's like, to the gendarme, basically, like, Kawashima didn't have a rank or anything at that time. He goes to the gendarme, you're my driver now. So, for a day. And he's, <laughs> he's like, okay. So, the gendarme was uh, Kawashima's driver for the day. Right, and like, the regular driver was like, what the fuck? I get disrespected now, I lose my job. <laughs> he, no, he gets to sit in the back of the limo for yeah. once. Come back, hang out with me. He's like, okay. I I'd never been back here. I got a bottle of- Come hang out with Major Wang. It's <laughs> 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 like, you disrespect my driver? Now you're my driver. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this day works. Off. The driver's like, it's my car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back to Shen. Because of such influence, Kawashima's house was always filled with Chinese begging for favours. Probably going, please, can you get me off? <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, probably in both. <laughs> meanings of that yeah. term. Kawashima's house in Peiping, Peiping or Beijing was like a fortress full of snares and traps. It is said that 29 police dogs, a number of monkeys, as we know, and two white geese, which had been given special training, watched the doors. <laughs> I mean, goose, geese is- Gooses, geese can be pretty, pretty I'm violent. I'm so glad you found that as enjoyable as me. This is hardly mentioned anywhere. <laughs> that is to say there's attack- Especially a trained- Geese to protect the front door. Alongside <laughs> What are you picturing here? Dogs. I've got quite a vivid picture in my mind. What is it? Rambo bandana. Yeah. On a goose. Oh, yeah. I, I imagine a little badge Gun on the belt, neck. B- badge on the neck. <laughs> Probably aviator shades. Yes. And just sort of- <laughs> <laughs> You know, like a little- Yeah. Uh, Goose ear pricks up. I think charging at the door. That movement you're doing is perfect. Leading with the shoulders. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know that there's twenty like well trained attack dogs, but those geese, <laughs> yeah. they're absolutely they're top running dogs. the show. Yeah. Yeah. They're in charge. Yeah. The dogs are waiting for the the geese command. Is it confusing to you that there are your dog is called Goose Jess? No, I understand that geese are <laughs> things. Um, but imagine if Goose was in that scenario. I think it might sound a little something. <laughs> it probably sound quite similar. What the fuck? Maybe a little lower. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because he doesn't really bark. But when he does, it's just a, oh, well, that's it. And you're like, okay, you done? And he's like, yeah. And then he goes. Ugh. Yeah, like, this is, is this a positive sound or negative sound? Yeah, what's going what on here, that? bud? You've that- seen a shadow and you're a bit spooked by it, are you? Okay, well, it's 4 a.m. Can we laugh or a cry, mate? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can oh, you say his, that again? His English is not good. Oh, dear. According to Dana's Chinese forces slowly turned back the tide of Japanese expansion, 
Kawashima's money trickled away, spent on supporting a drug habit and securing protection from the military through bribes. Also, you got to feed those, those goddamn monkeys. Yeah, and those <laughs> geese are burning a lot of energy. What monkeys eat? Uh, I mean, bananas, bananas in cartoons. Yeah. Don't know about in real life. <laughs> and geese? Bad bananas. dates. Bananas. Yeah, bad dates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in August of 1945, I don't know if you're familiar with this year. It's also it's the end of the Second World War. Soviet forces invaded. Oh, I thought there was going to be some sort of obscure thing like uh, the Saints <laughs> yeah. made it to the final but lost out to. It was the year after Fitzroy won their last premiership. Um, wow. If that's anything. No, it's and not because it it's oh. not about that year. It's the year after. So, yeah, it's also like, I don't know, fucking 20 years. Okay, it was the year Fitzroy were reigning premiers for the last time. Wow. How about that? <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> So, in August of 1945, Soviet forces invaded Manchukuo, capturing Po Yi, the puppet, the puppet head. Oh, the puppet. The boy, now man, king. Oh, yep. And uh, put the end, put an end to the J- Japanese regime. On October the 10th, 1945, Chinese troops recaptured Beijing. This was obviously bad news for Kawashima. The very next day, police arrested Yoshiko Kawashima under the charge of treason. Uh, according to Dunn, charged with treason, Kawashima was labelled a Hanjian, or race trader, in a highly publicised trial. Wow. Apparently, uh, Kawashima's uh, lawyer was like, no, they're not, they they can't be treasonous, they're Japanese. Hey, you, you can't be treasonous to China when you're Japanese. Right. What you think, what the term you mean is, <laughs> this is what they argued for, war criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Treason. Not treason. It's war crime. It's a war, war crime. crime. It's fine. Come on, guys. Let's call it what it is. In the scheme of things, it's fine. <laughs> it's not as bad as treason. Who here hasn't committed the odd war crime? <laughs> Come on. Hands up. Okay? All, no one's hand is up. You know you're in trouble when your lawyer's going, no, no, they're just a war criminal. Yeah. And the judge is going, no, it's worse than that. It's worse. <laughs> it's, sorry, mate. It's worse. <laughs> uh, I would say a war crime would probably be worse than treason. Yeah. but I would argue that. I would have thought so, yeah. But um, what about a treasonous war crime? Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now my blood is boiling. <laughs> Apparently, when the judges lacked evidence, uh, they turned to the highly fictionalized novel about their life. Oh, right. And used that as evidence. Oh, my God. They, they turned to the work of Barbara Morgan. Barbara Morgan. Also, other sensational news reports are printed over the years. Barbara, if you're listening, we're just <laughs> mucking around. We're having a muck. I'm just- I just like Barbara's name. Yeah. I'll I'll mention that I'm about to say the difference between what every other source says and what Barbara said. And it's not even that different, but I'll let you decide whether you think- No worries. But, the, but they- That's but, enough to But the truth the of it name. is they're, they're going back to the, the tabloid stuff. Yes, exactly. Yeah. N- not only the novel, but even, yeah, the sensationalised news reports. You know, they wore pants. <laughs> yeah. A horse. Well, I've heard enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's treason if I've ever heard it. Get the horse in here too. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Kawashima said, my whole life has been formed by false gossip about me and I will die because of false gossip. And unfortunately, this proved correct. Uh, Chinese public, furious at years of Japanese brutality, demanded the death penalty for the Matahari of the East. Wow. And yes, that was what the judge sentenced them to, unfortunately. For something a bit lighter, perhaps, Birnbaum wrote- Birnbaum. That at the trial, a judge asked why, Yoshiko- the princess had returned to Beijing. You know, after all that time, I was like, why'd you go to China? That was- <laughs> That was kind of dumb. And Yoshiko said, I came back because one of my monkeys had diarrhea. <laughs> so in the court transcript, bit of I fun. I feel like that, like, that's reason enough. Yeah. You cannot get diarrhea in Beijing. No. You can't yeah. if you're a monkey. Going, to, going for the diarrhea cure. Well, that's one of those obscure laws, is it? Yeah. What? No monkey um, can have diarrhea within the bound- boundaries of Beijing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to follow the reasoning there. So, I don't- if you've got diarrhea, you don't really want to be travelling long distances. No, you know? the worst time to travel is when you have diarrhea. I'd be wanting to stay home, mm. you know, close to my toilet. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's where all the hydrolite was. Oh, I or the- Electrolytes. It? Electrolytes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. More Gatorade there. Yeah, that's probably all. I mean, but in Japan, they got Pocari sweat. It's good stuff. Yeah. Maybe Chad, that's where uh, the monkey had a big uh, surplus of twisties and coke. Just what you want. Yeah. When you've got diarrhea, 
Twisties and Coke. That's what- uh- I don't know if that, is that just a Stuart household uh, oh, childhood. Never heard cure? that. Just for like diarrhea or when you were sick. Diarrhea. Yeah, right. This is supposed Twisted to like. Coke. I think it's meant to block you up. Clog you up a bit. Firm things up a bit. Okay. I mean, I never need we- it because a gentleman never shits, but well, my but sisters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit all the time. Shit and wild. <laughs> Twisties and coke. Because we'd have uh, like we'd have like Sprite. Or like a, a lemonade. Yeah, if you flat were sick. lemonade. Flat if you're lemonade sick, when yes. you're sick, yes. Mm. And like something kind of plain. This, I reckon, to younger listeners, this is going to sound like leeches. You know, <laughs> flat <laughs> lemonade. Why did it have to be flat? It may, I don't think it makes any. I it don't, didn't have to. I prefer it. It was the still sugar. Fizzy. I think is all yeah. it was, and it was just an, like an old wives' tale or whatever. That, yeah. Let me just quickly Google twisties and Coke and see if anything comes up apart from a deal from Seven <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> the diarrhea deal. <laughs> You go into 7-Eleven to get twisties of coke and they're like, mm-hmm. Oh, we know. Say no more. Two for ten, no worries. <laughs> Do you also want this pack of chewy? <laughs> for it, your ass. It definitely does not come up with any top hits. Let us know. Has anyone ever There's a, heard that? an Instagram know. account called Twisty and Coke. With oh, don't click on that. Do not <laughs> click on that. Uh, no surprise. Zero followers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not can, for me. Thank you. We can you. change that. <laughs> So, Time Magazine uh, covered this whole trial at the time uh, on the 5th of April, 1948, in an article titled Foolish Elder Brother, writing, Mm. just before dawn, so this is now skipping past the trial a couple of years later, 1948, this is uh, when the execution was to happen. Just before dawn in Peiping, Beijing's model prison, a policewoman called to Yoshiko Kawashima through the barred opening of the cell. But Yoshiko slept soundly. Her cellmate, Mrs. Lee, a middle-aged opium smuggler, shook Yoshiko, said Mrs. Lee in great compassion, get up, foolish elder brother. I'm like, what? But apparently foolish at the time was often used as a term of affection. An elder brother meant or could mean a woman of forceful attributes or one who could act like a man. So, it was just like, oh. it was almost like it was a term of endearment. Oh. It's, it's like, it's like foolish old, elder brother. But oh. yeah, it's funny that they, I guess they found it interesting at times because like, they titled the whole article that. Yeah. Yoshiko's eyes opened. Why did you wake me up so early this morning? Oh, what a brutal way to find out. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, I'm sleeping. Mrs. Lee replied, I'm afraid to think why. Thus began the last hour of Yoshiko's strange life. On this dim morning, Yoshiko rose and calmly put on a grey, cotton-padded prison uniform, then was led by six guards into the large vegetable garden in the rear of the prison. Uh, His official red silk cape thrown over an overcoat, Prosecutor Ho Chun Pan sat behind a small wooden table upon which was placed a writing set and paper. Have you any last wishes, he asked. I should like to have your permission to change my clothes. But the reply came, there is no time for that. Which is weird. It's like- How long does it take to change clothes? Why'd you ask me? Yeah, why'd you ask this? This, I'm not- I didn't say, can I go- uh, Shopping. Can I go to Prague (laughs) for the summer? Yeah, just can I get changed? It won't take me long. Like, that feels like a basic dignity thing, right? Yeah. What would you have said yes to? Yeah. Glass of water? (laughs) Oh, apparently, Shiko then said, oh, can I just write a quick note and- and he allowed that. Okay. I but don't know like what the I note said. I could have gotten but- changed in the same amount of time that yeah. I'm writing this note, but okay. The note I'm writing is, yep, this is me now changing my top, and this is how long it would take for me to change my pants. Yep. <laughs> there you go. And then just put the note right in his yep. fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> Staple it to his head. Apparently, uh, Yoshiko replied in mild irony, I'm grateful for the kind treatment I've received while alive in this prison. Then at 6.20... Yoshiko Kawashima was executed by a guard with a rifle. Though Morgan, Barbara Morgan, writes that it was a beheading, which is quite different. With a rifle. Because <laughs> there's photos of the body with a head. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, probably not. That was all Barbara. If you're listening still, and I kind of doubt you would be, but maybe your lawyer is. Maybe you are. Because <laughs> at first, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll say both. I'm not sure which. And then the photos made it pretty clear the head was still but on. But you could see that the head was definitely attached. Oh, no, that, yeah, that is interesting. There was well, about just- a half a foot gap between them. <laughs> is that not normal for- <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Back in the, the Times article continues. Back in the women's cell block, Mrs. Lee and the head matron made up Yoshiko's bed. Both women's eyes were red, as were those of a number of other women prisoners. The matron said Yoshiko was liked by all at the prison. On a little bedside table were several sheets of paper with poems Yoshiko had written the night before. They were brief eight-character Chinese couplets, which she liked to toss off almost every night, 
then destroy the next morning. So I'm so that's the fourth string. I mean, there's many strings, but princess, spy, restaurateur, poet. Mm, amazing. Um, which is cool because uh, the Times got hold of a couple of them. One of them read, I have loved ones but cannot rejoin them. I have tears, but for whom shall I shed them? Pretty sad, but kind of nice. Uh, and another one, the hero creates the situation. The situation creates the hero. Oh, that's great. Is that referring to the situation from Jersey Shore? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What was it? What was, I think that was uh, referring to the Marco Polo situation. <laughs> so, yeah, a photo was published of the body, which is was quite famous. You know, it got spread around. The photo, really? Oh, gosh. But it didn't stop people asking the question, was it really the Chinese princess? Because the photo wasn't that clear. It was from a bit of a funny angle. She was also shot in the back of the head. So, you know, like a lot of- Hard to identify. Yeah. According to Birnbaum, almost as soon as the photo of Yoshiko's corpse was presented to the public, the questions began. Had Yoshiko really died that morning in the courtyard? Only two Western journalists had been allowed to witness the execution, and they were outsiders who could not be trusted to verify the facts. A reporter from the Associated Press wrote about seeing the fabled princess fall before his own eyes, but skeptics wondered whether he could identify them correctly. The Chinese reporters, expecting to be present at the execution, had been barred from the prison that morning, denied entry, they raised the ruckus but weren't allowed in. If government officials had nothing to hide, why weren't Chinese journalists allowed to identify the deceased? When a family member sought to put an end to the controversy, by asserting that the hands of the corpse in the photograph were unmistakably Yoshiko's, few took notice. Nothing was distinct in the photograph, so how could anyone profess to identify the hands? And really, you you can you know you can hardly see the hands. Okay, so I, I a- mean, but some people have amazing hands. For example, Mary Queen of Scots. Very good Remember, point. Yes, you recognize this. That's that's the hands of a queen. George- These are the hands of a princess. And as we mentioned before, George from Seinfeld. Was a hand model. Exactly. Beautiful hands. Lovely You'd have a lot hands. of reference images to, yeah. you know, cross-examine. Exactly. Hmm. Uh, the questions never found satisfactory answers, and the rumours gained new persuasive details as the years passed. Money could purchase anything in China, and the family was rich and well-connected. They could have easily bribed an official to fake an execution. It also it se- ha- seemingly happened quite early in the morning. Weird, they didn't let Chinese media in, which is said, early in the morning, basically behind closed doors. No, we've got a couple of journalists who probably couldn't recognise her anyway uh, were there to see it. So, it is, it's all a bit weird. Later on, a woman came forward to claim that it was not the famed spy who had died that morning, but her own poor ailing sister. The woman's family had been promised a lot of money if the sister died in the prisoner's place. While some of the money had been paid beforehand, the woman complained that her family never received the rest. And the gossip spread. In a country as vast as China, even someone as well known as the Matahari of the East or Joan of Arc of the Manchus could have set up a secret life in a remote region. Sightings in the years since have been reported in Mongolia and Korea. Recently, Chinese researchers came forward to insist that until 1978 that Yoshiko had lived on in Changchung in China's northeast. According to these reports, Yoshiko had become more interested in Buddhism over the years, often visiting a nearby temple. In youth, Yoshiko had been known for tomboyish ways, and some Changchun residents swore that they had definitely seen the princess spire not so long ago climbing trees in the neighborhood. I love it. They were tomboy as a kid, so maybe- This person climbing trees? I think- I haven't looked closely, but I imagine. Could be. I assume. No, those hands anywhere. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the story of Kawashima Yoshiko. What do you reckon? I like to think- they lived on. Yeah. I mean, that's nice, but then it's also super grim that they killed someone else in their place and yeah, then okay. oh, yeah. okay. didn't pay the fam. Both are awful okay. situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, I, I let the the bit ailing sister do a lot of work. I'm like, oh, yeah, so probably dying soon anyway. <laughs> you know? Oh, okay, yeah. That's what I think that's what made me- Ate the word ailing. I mean, the dream scenario is like a Mission Impossible style thing where like they spray like fake blood over them, take the photo, oh, yeah. and then they get up and walk away. Yes. That's why they don't want the Chinese media there. Yeah. Because otherwise they'd say, they got up. Exactly. But the Western media, they didn't. They couldn't see that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know that bit. They waited till they'd left. Yeah, they because they didn't use uh, Western style sources like ketchup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, They yeah. used, you know, soy sauce. Yeah. They're like, oh, uh, blood's brown over here. Huh. That's great. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, because you're idiots. Yeah. So. Western media. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Lamestream media, I Oof, call them. I agree. Rooters. Yeah. <laughs> rooters better than good. What a bunch of rooters. <laughs> oh, they've rooted another story. But it's a fascinating life, isn't it? Quite amazing. How old would they have been if they'd been executed that day? 40. 
Wow, so young. You're very young. But if they'd lived on to the 70s. Yes. Quite a lot older. Yeah. <laughs> well, they would have been in their 70s. Wow. Um, Time. I found it to be incredibly fascinating. Really appreciate the suggestion yeah. from Sandy and Mike. Great suggestion. Yeah, and to the patrons who voted for it. Really interesting story. Well done. Yeah, I wonder what the the 37 siblings got up to. Who cares? <laughs> Yeah, that's just one of 38. Imagine. Yeah. Sounds like a good book title, The 37 Siblings. A lot. I, yeah, a lot of book. Other books have been written, fictional accounts, and, and they're still being written. That one I was quoting a bit from Bam Bam was only from a couple of years ago. Right. Yeah. Um, what a life. What a life. Well, I think that brings us to everyone's favourite section of the show where we thank some of our fantastic Patreon supporters. Uh, you know, the, the ones who helped choose this topic. Uh, with their votes, there's all sorts of things people can do if they get involved on the Patreon supporter list. Uh, and they can do that via patreon.com slash do on pod. And at the moment, we've got a little bit of a stretch goal where I think we're about 150 new patrons away from starting to release a fourth monthly bonus episode. What is it again, Jess? It's going to be, well, we do, it's going to be... Have we set? We can't figure out the name though. Oh no, the name's hard. But it'll be Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, a second season of our Dungeons and Dragons do go on show. Yeah, whether that's do go D and D, Dungeons and Dragons. Mm, I like that. To drag on with Dungeon. <laughs> Who cares? Yes, two. It's very complicated. But it'd be fun. To drag on with John. There's already one. <laughs> There's already one season of it that we did with uh, Adam Carnavale, the great DM, Dungeon Master himself, mm. up on Patreon right now, as, as uh, well as uh, 180 bonus episodes. Yeah, bonus reports, quizzes, all sorts of things on there. So you can get involved if you go to uh, patreon.com slash do go on at the Dreamboat Cooper level or above for that. But there's all different levels. There's voting levels. There's levels where you get to give us a thing called a factor quote or a question. Yep. This is on the Sydney Scheinberg level. Actually, this section has a little jingle, I think. It goes something like... Fact, quote or question. That's right. Ding! He always remembers the ding. She always remembers the jingle and the sing. And... To get involved in this, like I say, go to the Sydney Scheinberg level, sign up there. You get to give us a fact, quote, or a question, or a brag, or a suggestion, or really whatever you like, and I'll read them out on the show. I'll read them out for the first time. And you read them out good. On the show. And uh, here's a here's a fun tip from the first one this week. Has given me phonetic pronunciation, which Love I that. appreciate. Mayan Gallagher. Appreciate Oh, you. no, that is not. Let me go again. Mayan Gallagher. Mayan Gallagher. And I'm sorry, because I reckon I've butchered your name in the past. And Mayan's title, everyone gets to give themselves a title as well, is yep. Cool Girl Extraordinaire. Oh, <laughs> oh that holy is shit. quite a title. It's good to finally have that position filled, though. It's yeah. been sitting vacant for many years. I've had years. that up on seek. Yeah. And I'm paying to renew <laughs> that ad every month. Obviously, Jess is junior Cool Girl Extraordinaire, but- But uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't step up. No. So, the position has been sitting there. Thank goodness. Vacant. Uh and the cool girl extraordinaire, man, is offering us a brag. Yes. Which I appreciate. Love a brag. Writing, Rachel Jarrath, pronounced giraffe, Rachel giraffe, has uh, an- <laughs> Rachel giraffe. I did not know if it's spelled like giraffe. I don't know if I can take man's word for this. Anyway, Rachel, I'm going to- Is it like giraffe? Giraffe. 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 Okay. Rachel giraffe- an absolute bloody legend of the Patreon, Facebook, and WhatsApp community. I didn't know there was a WhatsApp community. Uh, won a very cool award. <gasps> she is a librarian and won an inspirational reader award. She is inspiring people to get back into books and embrace reading. And she looks hot while she's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Please accept this brag on her behalf. Love you guys. XX, which oh. I think is pronounced... But only two. Yeah, so, only Dave, two. no kiss for you. Oh, I, oh. I like how you assumed right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it's two for me. <laughs> it's not two for That's you, mate. It's not two for you, Dave. Let's come get on. real, mate. Come on, mate. Yeah, all right. Dave, um, come on, mate. Yeah. We, we, um, we, we, we'll be sweet six then forever and ever, Ross. That <laughs> is fantastic. Congratulations to Rachel, whose library Matt and I were endeavouring to visit when we were in the UK. We were yes. Talking to her after a show. We ended up needing it the hire car back. I'm too tight of a deadline, I think, and we missed it. Is that it's why? Always we- yeah, we are- the I mean, hire cars, man. And we only just made it. 
too. And then, and we called him on the way and they said, ah, it's fine. We'll be right. You'll be right. Yeah. He, he, was, he, he was had a, a wink over, over the phone, mm, basically. Yeah, he was a cool guy, that guy. Yeah, I love that phone. guy. Fucking hell, I love that guy. Anyway, um, <laughs> fantastic work from Mayan uh, and, of and course, Rachel. Rachel. Yeah. Uh, next one and that guy from the high car company. Oh, yeah. man. That love guy. that guy. Jeez, love that guy. <laughs> uh, next one comes from Sky. AKA, I'm finally not boiling or drunk this time. <laughs> okay. Boiling or drunk. The two states have been. Yeah. <laughs> the two states my of only, matter. My only states. And this is a fact, writing, I just got my first bike. And now Jess has a motorcycle named after her. She's a 2004 Honda Shadow Aero 750 in <gasps> blue. I'm very excited about this. I think there was a picture in the Patreon group. No kidding. That I saw briefly. Oh, yeah, that well, is right. sick. A lot of sweet ride. Don't know how I feel about um, Jess or riding Bob, Jess. Is it <laughs> I think it's called Jess. <laughs> That's a funny know. name. For <laughs> it's a very funny name. But you've always named your cars similar sort of. I had Colin. Standard names. Yeah. I think Colin is the is the car version of a motorbike Jess. If you know okay. what I mean. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, thank you very much, Scott. It's fantastic news. Uh, congratulations. Congrats. Be safe. Next one comes from Sophie Shooter. Sophie Shooter. Group mum. And I. Th- Unbelievably, still, I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation, Sophie, and I've said your name so many times on this show, and I've met you. So brutal. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> Sophie. Uh, I think that's right. Sophie's, because I want to say Tudor. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you should never trust your instincts. It is Shooter. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I double block myself advice. a lot. Like, I'll yeah. be like, oh, that's right. I think it should be Shooter, so it's Shooter. But yeah. I've actually now learnt the real way. You've gone the wrong way, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sophie's title, Group Mum. Yep. You've all been very good today. Thank you. Who Ooh. wants a lollipop? Me. Oh, yeah. I'll have one. Can I have a lemon chopper chump? Oh, I'll have anything except chock banana. I hate Fuck chock banana. Chock I hate banana. all the creams. Oh, I don't mind the strawberries and cream, no. yeah, but, but I prefer strawberries. The strawberry cream went fuck off. Okay, yeah. well, I'll just have it. You don't have to throw it out. I'll, I'll just have it. I've smashed it against Matt. a brick wall. I could have had that. There wasn't even one nearby. I had to walk around the block to find a brick wall. And I shattered against There's it. There's no brick walls around. Are we outside? Well, we are now. <laughs> I hope so. That's These are all plasterboard. It's a, fu- it's a fucking mess. Mm. I, you should be outside if you're smashing shit into a wall. <laughs> anyway, Sophie has a request. Ooh. Writing. I already say no. Okay. <laughs> Dave. I'm in. I'm going to wait to see what the request is. I know. Oh, that's foolish. Oh, coward. <laughs> we're, the, we're the classic three bears and Gold- Goldilocks style. I'm the little bear. <laughs> yes, you are. Or the mum. Whichever I'm the one, one is no, the I'm the hot correct porridge. one. <laughs> Uh, I'm the hot one. <laughs> I'm Jess is the cool one for sure. Uh, I'm just right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just Dave. wink at me? Oh, I winked at Dave. <laughs> it was an awful felt, wink too. It horrible. It was not cool. It took so long to do. Yeah, try you again. Try again. It took so long on a wink. <laughs> I don't think- it, But try the other eye. Maybe you can only wink. Like, nah, you just can't wink. Okay. I'm not good either. Good to establish. I'm a great winker. Hit Go me. On. Hit me. Fuck. Yeah, that's a quick smooth, wink. So smooth that I'm like, did she just wink at me? Yeah. <laughs> You asked me the same, but it was more like in disbelief. Did he Did just, just have the audacity? <laughs> I started calling the police. <laughs> <laughs> is this, not, is not this com- for me? It's not comfortable. Okay, we've got a request. Okay, yes, the request for us. Group mum. Uh, and reads, as being pregnant is now my whole personality. Yeah, pl- <laughs> much like I do Pilates now. Please, <laughs> could Jess- She won't stop talking All about right. it. Jess, could you please use your wonderful name generator to give me <gasps> some ideas yes. that would be a beautiful name for a boy or girl? Got it. Beautiful. Okay. Current favourite is Thundercla- uh, Thunderstep <laughs> Shooter. And Ooh. you guys have no idea if I'm serious or not. Thund- I have some idea. I, of course you're serious. Absolutely. It's a, it's a great name. It's a beautiful name. You boy or girl. You wouldn't say no to greatness. Okay. Thunderclap Shooter. I haven't even refreshed the name generator yet. Here are our options so far. Amaretto. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's- Puzzle. Puzzle so good. Puzzle, puzzle shooter. Puzzle, puzzle shooter. Puzzle shooter. <laughs> Unexpected. Unexpected shooter. Okay. <laughs> no, not that one. Well, you will get picked up at airport security. <laughs> <laughs> so no, don't go for that. <laughs> don't go for that. Yeah, shooter makes it trickier, doesn't it? Oh yeah. my god. Toby. Toby shooter. The classic. Don't mind Matrix. That. Matrix shooter. Or Ooh. wonder. Wonder shooter. But like W O N D E R. Hmm. Wonder. 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 You guys shooter. always tell me off for how I say that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll refresh. Charm. 
<laughs> bandit. That's a dog name. Bandit. Ba- but bandit shooter. I like I mean, bandit shooter. You're on the good side. You're shooting the bandits. What yeah. About <laughs> so Tennessee. Tennessee shooter. Okay, I think that's, that's it. great. That's the name you watch too. Tennessee shooter. Dexter shooter. Pardon me. Uh, that name was so good that my bottle fell over. Bumble. Ooh, after the English cricket commentator. Yes. Or Donald. Or Ooh. September. These are all options for Donald. you. Donald. Donald becomes Donny. Donny Shooter. Donny Sounds pretty good. Donny Shooter's pretty Don good. Don Shooter. Don Shooter. Yeah. Th- Please me, Don Shooter. Oh, that's good. That's a that's a salesman of some kind. I really think you should put all your children in a business meeting when you're coming up with names. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Don Shooter. Good, good day. Pleasure to meet you. Don Shooter. Don Shooter here. Tennessee Shooter. Tennessee Shooter. Put Bloody good to meet you. Put her there. Wow. Call that a handshake, mate. Give us a proper shake. Tennessee Shooter. Oh, that is good. Charm Shooter. Charmed, I'm sure. Nah, <laughs> Charm's going to, like, run a little shop where they sell crystals and stuff, oh, which yeah. is fine, but you're not in a boardroom kind of meeting. No. <laughs> yeah. Unless your business is going very well. <laughs> I mean, very there's a bunch well. of options there, but I'm putting forward Tennessee Shooter. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go with Bandit Shooter. Okay. Jess, do you have a favourite? No. <laughs> the final one this week comes from Adam Dashner and uh, Sophie. Congratulations, if I haven't said this before, on your uh, life. Now, Adam has a title, Farmedian, part pharmacist, part comedian. <laughs> oh. Extraordinaire. We've got two extraordinaires this week. Wow. Imagine that. God, we're lucky. Adam Dashner has a question writing, what do you guys call the little candies, sometimes they're chocolate, sometimes they're rainbow, that go on ice cream and donuts. There's a heated debate between calling them sprinkles and jimmies. We call them hundreds hundreds and thousands. No, hundreds of thousands and sprinkles are two different things. Huh. But I've never heard jimmies before. Little jimmies. Never heard that. I know johnnies. That's dingers. (laughs) (laughs) I would call them sprinkles. Jimmies is something you do to open a locked door. Yeah. Um, Is there more to the question or is it- uh, No. Sprinkles. So, there's a difference between sprinkles and- So, the the little ball sugar with the colours are hundreds and thousands. The sprinkles are more like little sticks. I thought that both of those are the same. Just I reckon I call- Like chips and chips, I call them both hundreds and thousands. But I would know what you meant. I would also think sprinkles means them both as well. Yeah. Well, I've gone to uh, bakingpleasures.com.au. Your homepage. (laughs) Thank you. That's amazing. This has popped up here. It's and it refers to them as Jimmy's sprinkles. Puts it together. Oh, cylindrical shaped sprinkles. Okay, commonly used as ice cream toppings. So then, is Jimmy's maybe like a brand? Oh yeah, I, know, I don't could think be. so. I think it's just it does seem to say that in North America, what's the difference? In the northeastern United States, sprinkles are often referred to as Jimmy's. Well, there you go. I call them sprinkles, and I love them. I I my favorite thing from like an ice cream van is soft serve. Covered in sprinkles. Yeah, I oh, think yeah, I prefer the sticks, probably. They're yeah, softer. Yeah, the hundred of thousands are too hard. Yeah, you have to go like real, ch- it real makes, chewy. It makes fairy bread not them. that fun to eat. Right, so you'd go sprinkles on fairy bread. Big time. Dave, same with you. Sort of, uh, there's no time where you'd use the hundreds and thousands, oh, uh, which I still a, maintain at both of them. I would at a stretch, but I'd prefer sprinkles. Okay. I wouldn't even use hundreds and thousands. I'd say I'd spit on them. I, I think of fairy bread as having the balls. Ugh. And, and breaking your teeth. Enjoy. Oh, having a little crunch. You got the softness of the the too much crunch. The, top the, one, to the white one bread. time that I think that um, I merged two bread brands together. <laughs> there. What am I like? You're crazy. The one time that sprinkles are superior is when they're on those little chocolates. The one time. Oh yeah, of course. The uh, what do you call those? You saying hundreds and thousands are superior on freckles? freckles? On freckles, yeah. Freckles are better with hundreds and thousands. I don't think I've seen them with. No, I've the never sticks. seen them otherwise. Exactly. So that's and I love those. So yeah, they're there's great. a place for. 100%. But that, I think okay. it's a similar thing. It's the difference in texture. That's why you want the crunch. It gives yes. you a little something different. You still have a bit of crunch with sprinkles, mm. but it's less of like ah fuck my teeth are broken. Okay. I think. Okay. It's more pr- enjoyable for me. I'm guessing you'd brush with Sensodyne as well. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like that's a way a boomer would call someone a pussy? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, go get your sensodyne, why don't you? Why are you kids these days? Bloody spoonful of uh... probably sit down to piss. That's one of my dad's ones. Yeah, baffling stuff. You what? don't do that, they're, they do. They're also known as hundreds and thousands. That's what they're called in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and the UK. They're also known as non pareils Oh, rolls off the tongue. It's because they're little balls. Which is apparently a French name interpreted to mean they were without equal. This is according to Wikipedia. Huh. Okay, okay. we've lost Dave to a Wikipedia spiral, but I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes. Uh, I say yes, yes on behalf of Adam. Adam 
uh, personally says Team Jimmy's. Okay. Or no, sorry, Jimmy's Gang. Jimmy's Gang. Well, there are these hundreds and thousands are also known in the, in Canada as Yummies, in the UK as Jazzies, Jazzles, Jazz Drops, and Snowies. Hmm. The la- the latter being of the white chocolate variety, Snowies. So okay, oh. that makes sense. White. To me. Oh yeah. Hundreds and thousands of Snowies. I yeah. don't think I've ever seen white hundreds. I've seen. Uh, like Adam says, of chocolate ones, chocolate ones, and multicolored ones. Yep. Anyhow, thank you so much, to Adam, Sophie, Sky, and Mayan, for your great facts, quotes, and questions. Uh, next thing we like to do is thank a few other fantastic supporters. And Jess, you normally come up with a little game here based on the topic. Yeah, we're going to give them two titles. Okay. So, Princess and Spy. Oh, okay. Love it, love it. We're going to have two kind of like roles. Right. Could be a job description, could be like an honorary title type thing. Great. Fantastic. Yep. Well, if I may kick us off. I'd like, I'd love you to, and I'd love you to just fucking do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I should just jump in. I mean, I'm still, I'm still not jumping in. I'm so sorry. I'm flustered. First off, I'd love to thank from Strath Creek. Right here in Victoria. Oh, I don't know where Strath Creek is. Yeah, either. Kerry Primrose. What a fantastic name. Kerry Primrose. Kerry Primrose. L- lead singer. And are we going to do one? one or yeah, you, yeah. You got, you got oh, no, song. I got nothing else. And Baker. Whoa. Oh, lead Which is hard Baker. because you get up so early to bake and then you're out late at night singing. No, it actually works perfectly. So, day starts with singing. Ends oh, great. Yeah, you wake up at, at yeah. you know, 10.30 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Go to work. You're on bar. stage at 10.35. You live, live above a music. <laughs> you look you? terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just coincidental. Hang on, Carrie Primrose. No, you look fantastic. Strath Creek is about 104 kilometres north of Melbourne. Okay. There is you it, go. What's it near? Uh, just, it just says uh, that. Any big things? Melbourne? <laughs> yeah, it's near Melbourne. Okay. It's uh, southeast of Seymour. Oh, yeah. Apparently. Got a good picture of it now. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kerry. Thank you, Kerry. Uh, next up, I'd love to thank from Pulaski in Virginia in the United States. It's Rick Rubick. I'll try that again. It's Nick Rubick. <laughs> Nick Rubick. Nick Rubick. Perhaps Nick Rubitch. Oh, or Nick Rubick. Or Nick Rubitch. <laughs> could be anything. Could be anything. Any of these could be right. Could be any of these, but I'm assuming you're, you're a Nick at least. You guys have a go each. Okay. Right. Um... Nick Rubick is by day a bank teller and oh. by night polyamorous. I don't know what that was. <laughs> okay, what is- good on you, Nick. You're out there. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm getting involved. <laughs> I'm not. I can't. My brain is not good at coming up with a word on the spot. Well, so is that just your go-to word? You're always thinking about mine's banana. Polyamory. Matt's polyamory. Well, I think at one point wasn't mine was something like splurge or something. Yeah. No. Sometimes yeah. it was just weird sounds. Well, yeah. At least this time it's a real word. Yeah. At least yeah. it's a word. So by day, a you know. Bank teller. Bank teller that you can set your watch to. Yeah. By night, a polyamorous person you can set your watch to. Yeah. <laughs> Great work, Nick Rubick. On you, Nick Rubick. And finally from me, from Los Angeles, uh, La La Land, Tinseltown itself in California in the United States, it's Amelia Todd. Amelia Todd. Librarian. Okay. And ski instructor. Oh, Whoa. That's a good combo. It's now, ski season. Jess, I, I would like to point out that- you are. Uh, you did a, a long arm, and I reckon you cycled through a few. Maybe words like polyamorous. <laughs> is that what I should be doing as well? Rejecting in my brain before speaking. Yeah, a bit of editing wouldn't hurt. Okay, well, I'll try that next time. You're only four hundred years old, so let's see if we can teach this old dog a new trick. <laughs> can I, I need thank a some- software upgrade? <laughs> right. Can I thank some people? Absolutely. Yes. I would love to thank from uh, oh Cape Town. Ooh. Uh, I would love to thank Samantha Cutler. Samantha Samantha Cutler. Cutler. I immediately go Cutler's pirate slash. Ooh. Pirate slash. Rejecting that one. Rejecting (laughs) that one. Not, certainly not that. Bunny rabbit. Ooh. Wow. A pirate bunny rabbit. (laughs) Mm. Wow. Nocturnal bunny rabbit. Oh. (laughs) My gosh. Actually, that's what they are, isn't it? Does it wear an eye patch? No, No, they're probably. So, is it a bunny that is also a pirate? No, I think just like, a, you know, like a werewolf. Yep. But only turns, a, into- turns into a were-rabbit. Were-rabbit. That has been done before. <laughs> <laughs> Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cute. 
Um, okay, thank you, Samantha. I would also love to thank from North Baddersley in Great Britain. <laughs> oh, what my like? What my like? I'd love to thank Michael Hayes Anderson. Michael Hayes North Anderson. Battersley is in the state ABC. Sorry. North Battersley. Sorry, North Battersley. It's in ABC. Um, and Michael is a uh, duke. A duke slash jumping castle. Whoa. Whoa. And when you say duke, you mean the cricket ball? Yep. Wow. Whoa. So, like, the kind of thing when it gets wet. Yeah. It turns into a jumping castle. Yeah. Oh, shit. They can really reverse swing these juke balls, but now <laughs> I didn't know they could do this. That's incredible. That's I reckon Michael Hayes Anderson from North Battersley is a cricket fan. I don't know. I'm just having a guess. North there. Battersley. Uh, and finally, for me, I would love to thank from I'm going to say it wrong. Uh, Lanaglen in Wales. I would love to thank Sticky Sounds Zine. <laughs> Sticky Sounds Zine. Zine. Mm. Bye day, Dave. It's probably a zine. By day, gold smuggler. Oh, wow. By night, silversmith. <laughs> okay. They never would yeah. suspect a Throws thing. Throws them off the scent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm a silver expert. <laughs> I know nothing about gold. Oh, what would I be doing with all that gold? <laughs> so that's pretty good. Dave, do you want to thank some people as well? I would love to I thank- loved your Welsh accent then too, Jess. Thank you so much. Spot on. Yeah. Hang on, I, I, this is, you know how we need a line to get into things. Yeah, I can Lloyd only, Langford, is it? No. Oh, shit, that's a good one. No, I can only um, do the 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 housemate from um, Notting Hill. Oh, yeah. You daft prick. Oh, okay. But I can't really do anything beyond that. <laughs> Welsh is not my strong suit. Dave. Beautiful, uh, beautiful accent. Oh, thank you. Beautiful oh, country. Yes, yep. No, the the both compliments were at you. I'm a country. And your comp- complex. <laughs> your comp- complexion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you are complex, though. I am. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> I'd love to thank. Yes. Uh, from location unknown, so we oh. can only assume they're deep within the Fortress of the Moles with their headphones on right now. And a big thank you and shout out to Crystal. Ooh. Ooh. Crystal. Crystal. With Chandelier. A C- so, you know who you are. It's Crystal with a C-H. They're a chandelier. Oh, I think that's tr- tr- Tristel. Um, chandelier. Tristel. Chandelier. Wow. Okay. I love these Transformer ones we're doing. Uh, chandelier by yeah. night. We've lost the plot. Uh, yes. And a- Really truck, lighten up a room. Truck driver by day. A truck driver that turns <laughs> into a chandelier. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Did you hear my joke? Oh, no, say it again, please. So they really light up a room. <laughs> so a chandelier, mate. <laughs> but it's also something people say about people. <laughs> Fuck, that's good. That's, that's good stuff. You don't get it, do you? I don't get it. <sighs> I get it. I love it. Crystal, thank you so much. Thank you, had Crystal. a great r- funny rhythm, though. <laughs> I would like to thank now from Rochester in New York State. New York. It's Mandy Kurtz. Mandy Kurtz. 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 Mandy Kurtz. Okay. By day. Yes. They are a Tuck shop lady. So, work oh. in the, the primary school canteen mm-hmm. selling, you know, treats to the young. These are all words that make complete sense in New York. That's what I'm Strawberry to, uh, Big M's. Uh, sausage rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch lady. Lunch lady during the day. Yes. And by night, they are a- Private investigator. Oh, I love it. That's yeah. fantastic. Doing stakeouts. Staking out. Steak sandwiches by day. <laughs> stakeouts by night. Oh, my God. That's the, good stuff. The Mandy Kurt story. That's great. I love that. I love it. And finally, I would like to thank from Essendon here in Victoria, it's Emily Williams. Emily wow. Williams, you son of a gun. From Essendon, obviously, a bomber by day. Yes. Oh, okay. And a drive-in cinema <laughs> attendee by night. Fantastic. <laughs> attendee. Attendee. Oh, wow. Oh, what do you do? I attend drive-in cinemas. <laughs> to attendee. review them. To review yeah. them. Reviewer. Oh, so just drives around drive-in Victoria cinemas. to the, like, the three or four remaining ones. Yeah, <laughs> reviews them. <laughs> Refuses to call herself a, a reviewer. I'm not, I'm not oh, a reviewer. I'm not an attendee. Yeah. Who then writes Habits down. to write reviews. What Thoughts, I experience. Opinions. And scores out of five. <laughs> I'm going to go to the drive-in tonight. You've put it in my mind now. Okay. We're not too far from one here. Do you know that? Hmm. The fuck? Did you know that about us? Yeah. 
Okay. I didn't know that about us. I know how far a drive-in is away at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so it. much to Emily, Mandy, Crystal, Sticky, Michael, Samantha, Amelia, Nick, and Carrie. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I'm losing it. Yeah, it's lunchtime. Okay, that might be it. Get luckily, some food and uh, then you'll shut the fuck up. Luckily, Mandy or Crystal, whoever is the lunch, the Kentuck shop. Mandy. Mandy. Can't wait to get a sausage roll on her. <laughs> I'm going to change it from my childhood preference of strawberry big ham. I'm going banana big ham. Yuck. Thank you. No, strawberry. Sorry. I like bananas, but not banana flavored things. I'd go strawberry big ham and a sausage roll. Yum. Well, apparently that was actually the original taste of banana. Some people say possibly a myth. Strawberry. No, fake banana. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay. Well, the final thing that we have to do is welcome some people into the Triptych Club. This is an exclusive club for people um, who have supported us at patreon.com slash do go on for three consecutive years. And Matt is at the door with the um, clipboard. He's welcoming you in. He's got the names. He's got the names. We're all celebrating you. I'm behind the bar. Matt's spilling shit all over himself as we speak. Just watch your sleeve there, bud. You put your hand what in What are it. you fucking doing? You said you didn't like it. I and don't, then you keep I don't drinking like it. it. Stop drinking it. He's drinking the coffee that Broden brought in. I <laughs> am- Oh, okay. No name and shame. <laughs> no, but, I mean, that was about two hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold. Yuck. I'm behind the bar. I've got all sorts of, uh, you know, delightful things for you. And Dave always books a band as well. Um, it's going on me. The coffee. <laughs> cold coffee. Okay. I think it could be something. I'm going to call it Chili Cough. Chili cough. It's a new product. Cold coffees. They don't oh, even heat them up in the first place. Oh, chili cough. What do you reckon? Chili cough. Love it. Take I reckon it could take off. There's, you know there's iced tea. It'd be like that. Only not tea. It'd be coffee. Chili cough. Wow. Chili cough. What do you reckon? I don't hate it. <laughs> um, but speaking of beverages, as I'm behind the bar. Yeah, what do you got this week for us? Sake. Nice. I love Bit of sake. Do you like it hot or cold? Dunno. Hmm. Like that answer, yeah. Dave. Hot or cold? I'm cold. Don't love a hot drink. Yeah. True. I'm like Jess. Either way, take it. Either way, yeah. yeah. I'd say, how how do you like it? That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those annoying customers. How how, how you how, choose? How should I have it? <laughs> I don't want to sound stupid. <laughs> and Dave, you book a band as well. You're never going to believe this. What I have booked, you done? I booked this these this double act. Oh, nine months ago. Okay. Oh and God, Dave, are you. Have you? But no, I don't know why. Nine months just seems. No, no, no. The it's one- also just an ma- amount of time. He's just about to announce he's having twins right now. <laughs> oh I, my god! I booked this double act nine months ago. If you know what I mean. He boned two different people. <laughs> that's and not they're how- both having twins. That's not how twins work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how twins work. <laughs> I can't believe I have to explain this to you. You are so old. <laughs> Back in my day, that's how you had to make a twin. These days, it's just. It's just the egg splits. Ah, uh, oh, bloody hell. Yeah, the kids these days. You're never going to believe it. Two acts, because they said, I'll only go on if they, uh, they go on before yeah. me. And they're from Japan. I would like to uh, welcome tonight to the club. They'll be taking the stage later on. First of all, opening act is Rad Wimps. <laughs> and Rad Wimps cool. are opening for Bump of Chicken. <laughs> Bumba Chinka makes up for you saying <laughs> opering. And then you said, <laughs> oh, I'm losing it. You laughed at him slightly saying opening, not quite right. Oprah. And then you went, Bumba Rink makes it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Bumba Rink, <laughs> you idiot. I was only because it was. He had two words out of 12 he said wrong. And I know I, I hit it at a similar sort of rate. When will you learn? I will. Oh, I keep. I learn every day. I get humbled at one point. The earlier in the day, the better. If I don't get humbled till the afternoon, then I've been a nightmare. All right. So the way this works, and I can't remember if we've said this already, but I'm on the door. I've literally. I've done it all. We've okay. done the drinks. We've done the band. And you just have to read the names. Dave's now. on the stage. Dave hypes it. Okay. Yes. D- where the f- Where have you been? All right. I'm going to start reading out the names. Then I've got. Oh, eight on the door list. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven on the door list. Mm-hmm. I've just kicked one out. <laughs> Not in those shoes today, you bludger. I don't know. All right. So, <laughs> I'll read them out. Dave does a bit of work, weak word play. Here we go. Hopping them up. From Overland Park in Kansas in the United States, it's Shauna Mallow. Mallow, you got a Shauna. Woo! School of Rock. 
from Winchester in Ham in Great Britain. It's Rebecca Watt. Uh, so, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do something with Ham. <laughs> uh, hamming it up, it's Rebecca Watt. Yeah. Ooh. From Lackham in AB in CA, Canada, AB, Alberta, probably. It's Cole Bouchard. Too much to work with. I feel like I've fallen into a black coal. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Of of, light, of love, though. of love, of love with Cole Bouchard. You related to Eugenie Bouchard, anyway. From Sheffield, Mister in Great Britain, it's the Funkasaurus. Look, I'm not going to say words for this person. I'm going to say, but ding, but ding, bing, 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 bing. funk, funk, Woo! funky. That was funky as hell. <laughs> From St. Paul, one of the twin cities in Minnesota in the United States. It's Sadie Fisher. No shady, it's Sadie oh! Fisher. The cleaning lady from Kilburn <laughs> in Adelaide, South Australia. It's Kirby Primer. They're in the Kirby of their life. Yes! <laughs> yes! And finally, from Kahiba in New South Wales, Australia, it's John Drake. I'm going to give you a pie. Here's one I draked earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like baked. Okay. Yeah. Woo! I'm like like a, like a man Oh, we're duck. not here for your criticism. <laughs> John Drake. Bloody good to meet you. Put her there. John Drake. Yeah, that's good. That's a good name. Thank you so much. John, Kirby, Sadie, Funkasaurus, Cole, Rebecca, and Shauna. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode. Welcome in, by the way. Make yourselves at home. Please. Please. Hot or cold, we got a sucky for you. Yeah, we've got a lot. We got a sucky for you. We got a sucky for you. We got a sucky for all of you. Mm-hmm. Now, Dave, anything we need to tell people before we go, <laughs> Jess? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> now we've got the suckies out the way. Uh, that we love you. If you would like to suggest a topic, you can. There's a link in the show notes. It's also on our website, which is dogoonpod.com. And you can also find us at dogoonpod uh, on all social media. Dave, boot at home. Hey, we'll be back next week with another episode. But until then, we'll say thanks for listening and goodbye. Later. Bye. Come on, me footy podcast. Love to. Come on, me footy podcast, Jess. Love to. Hey, Dave. Uh, <laughs> that was literally just because of the comedic third. Yeah, you yeah. please come on my footy podcast. I'd love Dave to. goes for the dogs. Oh, the Jess mo- is the pies. Yep. But actually, though, like, actually. She named a player. Pendles. Pendles. What's when the I- rest of his name? Scott Pendlebury. Great. Darcy so- Moore. Yeah. Oh, good yeah. one. Two That's players. Two. Can now you name? Dave. Uh, Chris Grant. Yeah, <laughs> that's so good. See, we love footy. Scott Wine. I, I had, Teddy Whitten. Oh, the Mr. Football. You missed the football. I had uh, on a wolf on the pod and we talked about the top. We, we did an AFL ladder of music theatre. So oh, yeah, it, I think that. it both fit in nicely. Love Fantastic. that. Dave loves musical theatre. He loves musicals. <laughs> I love ladders. <laughs> no, you're pies and that's it. Yes, you have a pie at the footy. Isn't that love the it. weird oh, thing? Yeah. No, Jess goes for the pies. Yeah. Dave oh. goes for the dogs, but Jess is the one who loves dogs. <gasps> and Dave's the one who loves pies. Dave hates dogs. I hate dogs. <laughs> I fucking hate dogs. <laughs> you got a dog oh, nice wallpaper. <laughs> my phone with Just for it. throwing darts at. <laughs> it's just weird. Don't do it on don't your, phone, your phone, mate. Don't ruin your phone just because you hate dogs I've so never, much. I've never once hit, so it's fine. <laughs> okay.